This is what all the women I've ever been with tell me. Big dicks are too much. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> I like to flip it on them and let them know how big they are. <laughs> yeah, I'd be like, I love a fat pussy. I love something I can oh, barely Can feel. I tell you something? I'm a little bit of a size king. <laughs> they go, what do you mean? I love gapers. <laughs> This week, September 28th, Tops Off World Tour starts in Fresno, San Jose, Anaheim, San Diego, Morrison, Colorado, Vail, Colorado, Hollywood for two shows, Jacksonville, Mobile, Abbotsford, Seattle, Portland, Milwaukee, Cincinnati, Nashville, Little Rock, Springfield, Philadelphia, Norfolk, Winston-Salem, Fairfax, Roanoke, Rochester, Worcester, Newark, Providence, and Albany, New York, December 10th. What weed did you buy? What do you buy when you buy weed? I'll go through my little my little fun bag. I was like, whenever I'm in LA, because LA, New York has never figured out legal weed. New York is so corrupt that now there's like we live in Midtown and there's like a bunch of places that act like they're dispensaries. Yeah, I saw that. And you're like, you're selling fucking synthetic shit. I can't I can't smoke since I've taken my favorite weed strain, Gary Payton. No way. Named no after way. the Hall of Fame point guard. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I would hope so. Uh, it'd be great if it wasn't. Yeah, that is he coincidence goes, he goes, as what fuck. What the fuck, man? He just sees it. He goes, or, the, or the fact that there's a weed grower that's so high that didn't yeah. know there was another Gary oh, Payton. Wait, I thought Gary Payton was just this weed I came up with. I didn't know he was the glove. So I always get Gary Payton whenever I go to cookies. And then um, I bought a joint. This is everyone famous now has weed. So this is Erica Badu. Famously, you know, the famous you singer. Call on Tyrone. It's called That Badu. Three pre roll joints. And nothing made me say, oh, that's a joint that's going to make me chill as fuck than Erica, yeah, Erica Badu. Badu. I was like, dude, I would cheat on the end with Erica Badu. Oh, she's so, without a fucking doubt. You know, she's uh, her and Andre 3000 have kids. Yeah. That's, oh, that that's was who, like, that's who, I'm sorry, Miss Jackson. Yeah. It's about her mom. I didn't know that was about oh, yeah. her mom. Oh, dude. Even better. Erica Badu. Erica Badu. Jones. What a fucking, what a beautiful fucking woman. Yeah, who also just like does artistic shit that you're like. And that. there's also, and there's also, sidebar, apologize, Erica, a little bit of a cunt. I kind of like that though. I like it too. Because it shows she doesn't Dude, play the I'm Hollywood game. I'm only attracted to cunts. I cannot be into like. But I like someone that doesn't play the Hollywood game and is kind of like, yeah, fuck you. I'm going to do whatever. Yeah. Or, or, or you will not tell me. I heard a story. Someone told me uh, he met Miles Davis. Miles Davis. Uh, the same guy I was telling you about in the thing said yeah. he met out Miles, da- Miles Davis when he was young on on a stoop in New York, and he was with a girl who lived by Miles Davis, and he, she walked by him every day, and she knew him. Yeah, she goes, "Can I introduce you to Miles Davis?" And he's like, "Are you being serious?" Yeah, she's like, "Yeah," and he goes, "She goes, Miles is my friend." Dot dot dot, and he goes, uh, "Mr. Davis, I just want to let you know I was introduced to you through my father. My father's a huge fan." He goes. I don't give a fuck what no white guy thinks about my music. <laughs> Beat it, cracker. <laughs> That's what you want. You don't want that thing where he's like, oh, where he does the double hands. Yeah. Oh, thank you, sir. S- something about a celebrity that's that good at something, tr- treating you like shit. You're like, oh, okay. Yeah, she's so Well, attractive. she is so fun. Is that her? Is a uh... God damn it. She's beautiful. God, that's what she Cleopatra did, looked like. She did a... She did a um... <laughs> She did a mixtape. Kool-Aid remix. In about 2015, all about cell phones. And uh, she fucking rules. She rules. She put Andre on a song called Hello. It fucking, it's awesome. There's a whole part of uh, of podcasting and internet that we don't get. Like that DJ Academics. And, oh, I. And like Joe Budden. Love it. And there's a whole Do you want to know what's crazy about Joe Budden? Uh, let me start by saying. I am such a Joe Budden fan. He rules. Yeah, I'm he, such a Joe Budden he fan. He talks shit. He I talks would... shit in a way that I'm like, I love it. But here's what a lot of people don't know. For for a while, Joe Budden would record his podcast on the same block as Matt and Shane's secret podcast. He lived down the street from Shane in Queens. For he real? didn't live down the street. He recorded down the street from where Shane and all of them lived. Really? Where Tommy and Chris do Stuff Island and all that shit. No way. Yeah, I always joke around. I'm like, this is one of the most famous blocks in podcasting. That's crazy. Because you got Matt and Shane's podcast under it, Stuff Island and then Joe Budden yeah. halfway. Half it the- would be nice to be in the position like like Shane's and Matt are in now where they're, they're like, they haven't talked about everything. Yeah. I feel like I've talked about everything yeah the more hours you put out there the more you're like have we i think in one of the things in the bonfire that i always ran in my mind was i was like have i told this story before oh, oh so oh, you'd have oh. to be like you have to 
started by being like, I think I've said this. Before. I've said I've said it. Well, here's the thing: is what's crazy is like people get upset. I don't mind hearing Rogan tell the same story. I kind of like. I like, kind of makes me feel like I'm a fan. I'm a huge Josh Homme fan. So when I see him on podcasts, I if he's going into a story that maybe he's told before, yeah. I'll be like, I know this one. I know it's like a hit. Yeah. You're like, I know this story. I know it's going, and it's awesome. Yeah, because you get to hear it again. We, dude, we just saw them, by the way, at Forest Hills where we did fully loaded for real. And I turned. Wait, to, you went there to and watch I, the show? And I sat there and I turned to Katie and I was like, "How cool is it that I got to perform on the same stage as Queens of the Stone Age?" That's crazy. And they fucking rocked. But I was like doing that thing, you know, when you're like show somebody where you work, where I go, "Yeah, I don't know. They're either gonna come up on that side or that <laughs> side." <laughs> Acting like I fucking knew. I'm like, they might come over here. And she's like, "You don't know." I was like, "No, nah, I don't." But I, but I, I, we, I had coffee in that tent because <laughs> we, because we came in through the back where the party was. After the party, they're gonna throw a, a party party by the pool. That's what it was, and pool. they did. And yeah. I go, "That's where Sh Shane swam." I feel like a little kid showing his desk to his parents when they come for parent there. I go, "This is where we do college." Coloring. And this is and Katie's uh, Katie's in the you know, she's been around so much cool shit that she's like, all right, dude. But I'm like, this is pretty sweet. It was uh, yeah, but it was awesome. It was really fucking cool to be like sitting there watching, be like, this fucking venue. Best, rules. best, uh like best rock band. Queens of the Stone Age. For real? Yeah. Uh -oh. I mean, they're my favorite band of all time. For real? Oh my god. I've been I've been into them. Really? And I lived in Tucson. And I worked at this radio station, KFMA, and they came out with songs for the deaf. And, you know, they're like fun. fun but were they really for songs for the deaf? What's that? Nothing. Yeah. They're like, <laughs> I, didn't, I didn't touch a single one of those. <laughs> like, just turn it up more. It's just, <laughs> what? It's just bass. <laughs> so they can feel it. <laughs> oh, I got it. It's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. You have to put your ear to the ground to listen. Bing. <laughs> Bing. Still not hearing that? It's Bing. all vibrating. <laughs> they... um. But when I started at KFMA, I was living in Tucson, and they're from the desert. And it's like, dude, Queens of the Stone Age. You know, you had that story when you came on the bonfire about when you were in, I think, Vietnam, yeah. and you got on the motorcycle and listened to the doors, and you were like driving, and you're like, it's one of the best musical experiences I've ever had in my life. Yeah. That for me was being stoned driving from here to Palm Springs, which is rumored that's the album of Songs for the Deaf. It's, uh, them listening to the radio from Palm Springs to LA, I think. Really? And uh, I put it on and I was just like, this music in the desert. But 2002, getting into Songs to the Deaf, and then I've just been with them ever since. And they're like my favorite band because they're my band that I found myself. Yeah. Like no one showed me them. I got into them and liked them. And then my friend Greg was like, here's all their albums. And I just did the back dive. And then I've been a devout fan sense it's cool when you fucking get into a band and you get to do a deep dive oh my god when you go back a couple albums i think about that a lot with comedy i think there's a lot we don't realize how many people do that with us like let's say i'll be on your podcast yeah. and they'll be like i like this guy and then they go find like eight years of the bonfire or you do rogan and they're like i love burt and then they go find all the burt cast and all the uh -oh. two you know I, had what I, mean? someone, I had someone say that to me recently dude i just deep dived your shit with my dad that's the best and you're like really that's the best because they're bringing up shit that you forgot yeah where they're like do you remember when you did this podcast you're like, i don't even remember that but it there to them it's new oh someone said to me the thing the, about when you got that watch from will smith and i was like huh <laughs> like, i was like i don't know man i'd say a lot of wild shit i don't say that again yeah i don't <laughs> that might be a lie yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's it is that was it, the problem is you'd do Rogan and he'd ask you a question that you didn't like you were like you're like, I don't know if I wanna answer this totally truthfully right it, now. It's it's sensei questions. It's like the way a drill instructor or a sensei is like, what is this? And you're like, just answer the question. Yeah. Just answer the question even if you're wrong. Oh, I those I, I look back, I don't even know. I, I have no recollection of the things I've said. The things I've said, the wild opinions I've held. Oh my god. The and and you know what's so funny is there are younger dudes in podcasting now like I've, I've seen it where they'll say something and then they'll they go they're like they totally regret i never didn't mean it not just like racial shit yeah just shit about britney spears dude i have said wild shit and i've just accepted it the way i've always phrased it yeah. is it's cancer i smoked for a, lo a lot of years if it happens it happens <laughs> if i get cancer i'm like I know where I came from. You know, it's, you get to a certain place in life when you, no, now I'm talking about health, but you yeah. get to a certain place in life, you go, yeah, well, I am going to die one day. 
So, so like, what's the deal? So what's what's the rush? In my 20s, and especially in my early 30s, I was so afraid of dying because I didn't feel like I've done enough or whatever. And then I think you live a certain amount of years where you're kind of like, all right, well, if the end hits, it's going to suck. Yeah. But kind of a cool run. Yeah, well, it's going to hit sometime. That's, yeah. what I, that's the thing is like, is i'm not that i I haven't come i definitely haven't come to peace with it but like uh i just went to a doctor's appointment recently and it was the first time i went i went sober i've never gone sober but it was like meaning i I go to the doctor oh okay i was like damn dude you're in the parking lot fucking having a couple being like yeah i'll do some x-rays just let me get a couple screwdrivers in me no get loose i was was doing i went in like where i hadn't drank in a week yeah i just hadn't drank normally i don't do that because i want to go in hot yeah so like he knows where I'm at. Yeah, you want and you want him fucking fully raging. I was like, tra- I was training for one one time. Yeah, and Roki goes, "You're not drinking tonight." And I go, "I have a doctor's appointment tomorrow." And he was like, "Buddy, that's not how you're supposed to go to the doctor." <laughs> yeah, I went, what? He's <laughs> like, "You drink tonight. You show him where your body really is." Yeah, it's like it's almost like going to the dentist. We're like, "Don't brush your teeth before it. Oh. Let him see your filthy fucking Dude, fangs." I, I have so much plaque on my teeth that when he removed it once off one tooth, I thought he broke my teeth. God, what about though when they stick it with the needle, you know, or they stick it with the claw and you're like, oh, that's how much fucking plaque I have. Oh my God. You have no idea. My, I, 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 uh, I have to go. I have a dentist appointment coming up. I'm trying to do like a full, I'm doing this. Okay. I'm going to say this. I, I hope this comes out right. Okay. I had a moment. I had a moment on a, you want to light the joint? Yeah. I was going to um, try these. Do you want to try Joey's weed? Yeah, dude. These cross joints. The cross joints are pretty cool. They're hard to hit okay i mean I'll, I'll i like they're fun yeah but uh he's got this too we can like both yeah dude i uh this is my first time oh i see what you mean i was like cross joint it's a cross that yeah okay they're I'm great s- they're fun for like a party yeah i'm gonna save this but uh but they're fucking oh by the way please oh walk goodness. out with his yes. oh this is that's a fucking tube oh this is way too much weed you know what though you like that up I'll jump in in the harmonies. Is this? And then yeah. we'll take it to the bridge. And we'll I have see not. I talked to Ari today, and I said I'm gonna, I'm gonna hang out with Soder. I'm not drinking right now, just because I'm on keto. Yeah, I'm trying to lose weight. I said I think I might get high, and he goes, "Yeah, get a little high and hang out with a stoner." And I was like, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Why wouldn't? <laughs> yeah, I? yeah. Go swim with a with a fucking someone that lives in the ocean. I fucking look at that too with that fucking torch. That's the way to go, dude. And that's Joey's joint. God damn, dude. Look at this fucking I think that's a, gram, that's a gram of weed in there. Dude, I love it. <laughs> Gotta fucking milk the edges. <clears throat> Ari is the best person in the world to do drugs with. I don't know. He's a good, a close uh, second. he's a really good, we had a really great talk. Well, I've, I've had, better, I've done drugs with funner people at times. Yeah. Well, you <laughs> know, they give, I they think give you, you the option. Yeah. But, when they tell you you're doing yeah. drugs, it's a big um, difference. <laughs> Ari uh, is a great person to talk to. I had a great conversation with him about about everything. It's very uh, he's he's a traveler, yeah. So he knows a lot. He also pulled one of the coolest moves I've ever had on drugs. <laughs> What's where that? we we were at Bonnaroo in 2016, and he got pure MDMA, and we saw uh, LCD sound system. It, it was For real, my first time ever seeing. You know, it. they played right after us at Four Stills the night after us. Oh, dude, that's the best. I got him. I left him a bottle of wine and and mushrooms. Yes, perfect, yeah. perfect. We did MDMA, which I had never done. That before. is a really massive joint, and that might be my go to this weekend for Leanne's birthday. Yeah, this is fucking nice. This is my Good first job, Joey Diaz. Yeah, Joey Diaz. Shout out to Laughing Gas. Also, let me just do this What's because that? I had the sniffles, and I don't want you getting this. Oh no, hold on to it. I'm gonna fucking. I'm gonna slow roll it. I'm gonna smoke it throughout the podcast. Yeah. Right. I like to take a hit, find out where I am, and then slowly. I like to get real it. scared. <laughs> like what are you, Rogan? Ee- the first um, time I ever met him, he goes, uh, he showed me his deprivation tank. He goes, you know what you need? Take a bunch of edibles, get in there. No. And I was like, what? And he goes, it's not, it's not fun until you're scared. And I went, okay, we don't know each other very well, and that is not how I do drugs. My friend Russ owned a deprivation tank in Philly, and he was like, yo, come down and do it. While I was working helium, and Gary Veter and I did it, and we got high before. And I wasn't scared, but this from laying in it, the humidity build up on my forehead and I was sweating. And they tell you, don't 
touch your face because it's salt water. So like 50 minutes in, I went, I just got this itch. And I went like this and salt water just went in my eye. And I was like, oh, <laughs> it fucking ruined the whole thing. Cause I was like, fight through it. And then the whole time I was just like, this fucking sucks. Do you remember those little, do you remember they used to have Bianca drops you could put under your tongue? Mm -hmm. They used to have droppers that you could put in your, in your thing, like little droppers in high school, Bianca did. What? And one time we were in front of, what was it like THC? What? No, no, Bianca. It was, oh. Bananka, 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 Bananka. Am I saying it wrong? Bianca. I was like, Bianca. What kind of designer drugs were you doing down in Florida? Bananka. You never had a Bianca? It's a French heroin. And you're like, <laughs> I don't. Even, I've never even heard of that. And so, one time we were outside of fucking. I wish I could remember whose house we were. I can visualize the house right now. Yeah. And my buddy was like, Hey, does anyone have eye drops? And someone accidentally handed him the Bananka, and he put it in his eye. And he, he got mouth he got mouth freshener in his fucking his eye. eye. And we went like, whoa. And everyone was high. And we were like, what the fuck? That's like when you're stomping the ground and you're like, no, 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 no. Seriously. There's something, <laughs> there's a big fucking problem, man. That's like when you get that white eye where you're like, ah, where yeah. it takes away your everything. You're like, I get I get allergies. I'm allergic to gerbils. And if I I found out that out the hard way. Damn, and dude, so you can <laughs> never have the real fun of letting one wiggle in your ass. <laughs> I can't start that rumor about you now that you have that fucking info out there. I go, yeah, he, yeah, he shoves dribbles up his ass. He goes, no, he doesn't. He's allergic. He would swell. <laughs> I would come back with my eyes swollen. And I was like, he goes, I just had the most, <laughs> I just had the most erotic, dangerous situation of my life. I, uh, my, it, the, you know, the little part of skin, like when you look in your eye, that little, you know, like little meat part, right? Yeah, the yeah inside, a little red part. It swells over my eye. It's scary. Wait, so it like comes up. And it over? comes over my eye. Wait, you were going to tell me a story and I cut you off. Oh, we were talking about, um, we went to Bonnaroo in 2016. LCD sound system. Yeah. And so we did MDMA ruled. It was like the best time of my life. Ari did a secret show that night at like three in the morning in this like barn. And it was fucking great. And then uh, the next day, Ari was like, all right, well, it's, it was Pearl Jam was the next night. Whoa. And so we're like living in this camper on site. And Ari's like, do you want to do MDMA and mushrooms? I think it's called either hippie flipping or candy flipping. The druggies know. It's, yeah. There's got a name for it. And I was like, yeah, I'll do that. Absolutely. I'm leaving Sunday. So we eat the mushrooms, eat the MDMA. What's the perfect time of the day to eat mushrooms? Uh, dusk. You want to eat it like as the sun is setting. You want to watch it go day to night and okay. then trip. Because then you see everything in the dark. Like fucking, you feel you're like I can fucking see everything. We should make a list. Write this down. Make a list of best countries to visit and best drugs to do there. Oh my god! I mean, Ari's. You could do a four hour podcast with Ari about that. Yeah. But the reason I say that he's this is where I started calling him the Sherpa. I uh, I got fucking shot up. Yeah. MDMA and mushrooms. Let me roast this again because I don't want you getting the sniffs. Um. Dude, I was so fucked up that I was just like watching Pearl Jam, but just somewhere else completely. I was so fucked up and I was scared fucked up. Like I was like, this is not, this is starting to get dark. Yeah. And out of nowhere, just Ari just touches my shoulder. He just touched me he, like in a very like, you know, him like watching the show. But he, And I was like, Oh, hey, bud. And it just brought me back. I was like, that was the most veteran drug move I've ever seen anybody pull. He just somehow knew at that moment, saw the fucking, the chaos on my face and touched my shoulder. The um, Joey Diaz went, I've said this before, so I'm going to, but I'm going to say it again. It's my favorite, my favorite Joey. I have so many favorite Joey Diaz stories. Yeah. When Ari drugged me, I was terrified and I called Joey. And, yeah. I, and I said, I already just slipped me Molly. And he's like, I'll be there in five dogs. <laughs> he's like Winston the Wolf. Yeah. And he, <laughs> he showed up and he goes, where is it? And Ari shows it to him. And Joey takes the rest of it and sits down with us. That's so funny. He goes, I'm going to follow you in there. And he goes, no, we're going to be fine. No one dies today. I can tell you that, cocksucker. Damn. And dude. then he sat with the most beautiful son glistening over his shoulders as it set and there was a bird of paradise behind him and i looked at the shadows and i thought i'm gonna be okay yeah I, and it you know i That's, love that i love that guy dude, everyone should so have much. a everybody should have a drug lifeguard 
Everyone should oh have a guy. I should be. Can I tell you, I'd like to do that for booze. You should do that for weed. Yeah. I mean, I don't know if I can. I think I'm too anxious for weed or they're like, I'm fucked up. I'm like, are you dying? Are you dying? Because I can't watch you die, dude. I've had too many people close to me die. I can't fucking watch you die. But I would, you know, like alcohol, that's a thing. That would be a service. I read this article about how there's people now, they're wondering if they should train EMT workers on um, like the psychosis from drugs, like mushrooms and weed, like when you lose it. Like having someone come can, in. Can you, when I've had there was an I've article had, I read it. Might I've have had been, marijuana psychosis. Yeah, dude. I've I've uh, you know I have and watched people fucking. It's not fun yeah. losing it on weed. Weed's so strong now yeah. that you can. Oh, uh, that's why I'm. And this is Joey's weed. Yeah. So by the way, it's called Laughing Gas. I have to give a shout out to Joey. He sent me 15 pounds of it, and it's so good. No shake, no trim. Yeah, it's Joey. Joey. So Joey it's like awesome. Joey went through and. And like, they would send him samples, and he'd smoke. He goes, "No, nah, dog, keeps you up at night. I don't like that shit. That's I want to have laugh. I want to have good. I want to enjoy the night with my kids." How my fun kid- is that to be able to be a, a experiment? Oh, just how- having them be like, just send you stuff, and you're like, "I'll take this," and then write notes. I've done it with alcohol. It's not fun with alcohol. No, you're like, I Cause... fought Leanne. <laughs> like, I hit her twice. Wrong yeah. one. Woo, gin is. <laughs> woo. What did you put in this? I have. I have. I was trying to launch a, a, a vodka a long time ago. Long, long time ago. Yeah. Bef- way before, th- I mean, the machine store went viral, but not like the way that, you know, it's not my career today. And I sat down for a vodka tasting. I got so fucked up. Yeah. And I could not tell you what tasted different than anything. You go, six and seven make me think you want to kiss me. <laughs> Are we about to kiss? Are you gay? Are you gay? I'm <laughs> I think it's actually cool. Honestly, right time, right <laughs> moment, right now. You tell me yes, I'm going. I don't say no. I'll suck you and fuck you like you've never been fucked. Just <laughs> 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 the alcohol tester. Yeah. That would be. Dude, my dad was born to do that. Your it, dad died from alcoholism. He died from. Now follow me. It's a little. It's a little. We call it the white trash shuffle. He got hepatitis C from some dirty trailer trash bitch he was banging. Yeah. And then didn't know he had hepatitis C and then drank. You know, he's a real bad alcoholic and drank and it turned into cirrhosis. And then he died of cirrhosis at 48. Jesus Christ. Yeah, my dad went. But like, my dad went, dude. My I dad always, was Usain Bolt of alcoholics. I always wonder, like, how much do those, like, Stan Hope had a great, not a great joke, but I heard him on a podcast one time. They were, he was like, they were talking about uh, Heath Ledger. Yeah. And he goes, how much Xanax did he take? Like, you got to put that in the article. Yeah. How much Xanax? How yeah. much Ambien? Like, because I do that all the time. Yeah, that's awesome. Stand up. like, <laughs> you got to put in the measuring. Yeah. If I'm going to make the cake, put in the fucking measuring. All right. Yeah, Stan Hope's a guy where um, he is like an all time Hall of Fame stand up comedian. And just the fact that he stayed true to he is who he's always been. It's that's courageous. He is a uh, dude. He's he was a guy. Ow, fuck. Are you all right? You just, just got nailed. My foot. No, he's out. Oh, fuck. Are you all right? It was it was kind of cool because it just went. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, dude. It look, you look like you knocked the whole chunk off. You know, I quit drinking ten years ago. But Giannis, Nate, and Chris Laker used to have this podcast. I just talked about this, but they had this award ceremony called the Chris Laker Awards. Top five night of my life. Yeah, uh, and it, we were all. I mean, a bar in Brooklyn that we, Giannis did this Sunday show. Me, Joe List, Mark Norman, Nate Bargetti, everyone's there. Fucking hammered. Yeah. And I won, me and Henry Zabrowski from last podcast on the left, won, we tied for most likely to die in the next year. And they gave us these mini lighters. And I remember being like, <laughs> I remember that feeling of like, yeah, you guys think I'm gonna die? Okay, because it's not like I, I'm not I'm not rock and roll. I'm not cool at all. Yeah, I just loved booze and yeah. I loved going hard at it. Yeah, and I and I was a sh- I was in the worst part of comedy. I was in the part of comedy where you're like sitting through a show with seven people in the crowd, and you're yeah. like, yeah, getting fucked up kind of makes this go smoother. Oh fuck, yes. There's <laughs> no going like, outside to smoke cigarettes. You don't look rude. No. You look like you're like I'm gonna go smoke. I I don't have to listen to these two sets. Yeah, because you're in a, in a you're in a small pond, dude. That I when I I did, did a roast of me. Yeah, and every joke was about me being dead. Oh soon. yeah, yeah. Big and J. Then, I remember then, Big J did it, and he yeah. was like, he was like, yeah, it was a fun time. 
<laughs> he was like, I think Bert was fucked up the whole time. I was blackout drunk. That's all. That's I was great. like, I'm not gonna. What a way to do a roast. Because yeah. then you, it's like they see you and uh, they're like, no. hey. And then they had me screen it before they released it, and uh, and they go, ladies and gentlemen, the man of the hour, Bert Kreischer. And I hit pause. I go, I spoke. Oh, bud. And Whitney's like, you don't remember speaking? And I was. Is like, it the feeling of when you wake up and your car's at home? Yeah. And you go, how did my car get home? <laughs> that wake up call i had that a couple times in arizona where i was like hey why am i i one time i was at a friend's house and i woke up and i was like how how did i get here and they were like <laughs> you did that and i was like it was it like that feeling where yeah you're like fuck, fuck 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 i was in here i was in this room and i was like oh was that's like, even me giving giving me sweaty palms dude i was like so wait what did i say and the, everyone was like you really don't remember you sang beautifully oh <laughs> I, I had a good i had a good dismount <laughs> I just went up and I went. When I was 22 years old, I got involved with the Russian mafia, and then I just fucking sat down. Yeah. And then Kesha came out, and then, uh, but yeah, it. I, I remember, I kind of miss drinking and driving. Okay, <laughs> I'll follow you. Like when you did, when it was like no harm, no foul. When you were a kid, That's, yeah, but understand and you it. didn't realize you didn't realize how serious it was oh yeah you they'd have the dude come and talk to you at your school but you guys are all to roll your eyes you're like yeah, yeah part that, of like us yeah we have 16 we're we're 17 years old we're yeah. nimble on our feet we, i have a jeep cherokee we're gonna be fine <laughs> i had a i had a dodge stratus i think that thing is built to take a fucking <laughs> t-bone oh i we there was a guy that was like a nice sedan i was sitting next to one of my best friends right that i've known forever and there's a guy that comes out and talks to our school and he was like, he was like, I got so drunk, I got on the causeway the wrong direction. And we yeah, like, that's horrible. We laughed because we th- we were like, how the fuck yeah. did you get on the causeway the wrong direction? Like, it's a really tif- tough road to get on the wrong side of the causeway. Yeah, and I, then think, he- uh, I think I think this is like how how I know I'm getting older. Like, drinking and driving is the dumbest shit in the world. Oh, oh, it's yes, the dumbest shit in the world, and you shouldn't even do it once. Yeah, it, like I had friends that have lost uh, family. I've had friends that have lost friends. It's fucking, it's horrible, dude. The thing is, is I'm starting to feel that way about weed, and I never, ever felt like they were the same. Driving on weed? I always was like. I could never drive on weed. That's exclusively how I've I've driven like 12 hours just smoking weed the whole time. Are you serious? Yeah, and I'm like, and then now I'm like, that is so dumb. I always thought booze was always the clear, it's fucking dumb to do that shit. But weed, I was like, man, I'm driving. I'm And then now I'm like. That was so ridiculously dumb. Yeah, it's it's the same. Your reaction time is slower. Yeah. You're just high as shit. But yeah, I I think like that was something that young me, if you would have asked me like 10 years ago, like smoking weed and driving, I'd be like, I fucking nail it. I'm so cool. It's like a video game, bro. Dude, put that playlist on. (laughs) Shit your pants. And in my head, I'm like, I'm like just driving, but probably I'm zoning out. I don't know. It is. I'm going slower. That's like the age old joke. Have you ever driven on speed? We are supported by Black Buffalo Zero. If you're 21 and older and chew or dip like me, check out award-winning tobacco alternative, Black Buffalo Zero. It is everything you love about dip and nothing you don't. No compromise. Long-cut pouches made from edible green leaves, food-grade ingredients, and they come in all the classic flavors like wintergreen, mint, straight, peach, even blood orange. It's the ritual for me. The taking the thumbnail, run it around the can, pop it open, Give it a smell. Is it fresh? Oh, it's perfectly fresh. Does the smell remind you of all the great times you had with your best friends? Absolutely. Black Buffalo sells their products online and ships directly to your front door at blackbuffalo.com. You can use our promo code BERT for 15% off your first order. Black Buffalo also sells their products in thousands of retailers across the United States. Check out their store locator to find a location near you. I get mine at an AM, PM. We're on the road. That's where we found it. Honor your rituals with Black Buffalo. One last time, that's 15% off your first order with code BERT at blackbuffalo.com. Black Buffalo Zero products are intended for adults age 21 and older who are consumers of nicotine or tobacco. We are supported by Shopify. Shopify is the commerce platform revolutionizing millions of businesses worldwide. Whether you're a garage entrepreneur or IPO ready, Shopify is the only tool you need to start, run, and grow your business without the struggle. And once you've reached your audience, Shopify has the internet's best converting checkout to help you turn them from browsers to buyers. Shopify powers 10% of all e-commerce in the U.S. And Shopify is truly a global power force, powering Allbirds, Rothy's, 
Brooklyn and, and millions of other entrepreneurs of every size across over 170 countries. This is possibility powered by Shopify. We are a hardcore Shopify family. We have only used Shopify. It has helped grow our business exponentially. Even in last week, I got a call from Leanne explaining what an increase it made on fully loaded. Here's the deal. Sign up for a $1 per month trial period at shopify.com slash BurtCast, all lowercase. Go to shopify.com slash BurtCast to take your business to the next level today. Shopify.com slash BurtCast. Have you ever driven on speed? No, but dude, one time when I was 16, we took mushrooms and we had to go get cigarettes because cigarettes are fucking awesome when you're on mushrooms. I mean, cigarettes are the best. When you're I was mushrooms. still smoking when I took last time I took. No, I wasn't. Oh. I took mushrooms recently. Oh, dude, just the thought of r- just ripping cigarette after cigarette when you're when you're on mushrooms. Oh. So me and my buddy Fujak get in my car. Fujak? Yeah, shout out, Fu. Um, he he's driving my car i think i knew, I knew his sister low uh, <laughs> low jack she didn't drive low jack <laughs> <laughs> sarah's actually a beautiful lady uh she's great uh but we so we take mushrooms and he takes them with me i think i i i, I don't know i just remember eating like an eighth and i was like all right but i ate them but you know mushrooms they take a while to kick in yeah and i was like fuck 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 i'm out of cigarettes we gotta get cigarettes and he's like um i'll drive your car and I was like, okay, cool. And we're driving a car, and then we, he takes a wrong turn, and a cop sees him and fucking hits the lights. Uh, and I'm in the passenger seat. He's driving. He's not fucked up at all. I am starting to get fucked up. Oh, he's sober? He had eaten mushrooms, but they were hitting me. Yeah. They weren't hitting him yet, because he was like, what are you doing? And I was looking at the red and the blue, and I was like, oh, boy. Oh, boy. <laughs> and then the cop. I think our future is chasing us. Oh, God. And then the cop came it was a it was a lady police officer and she came to the side and i just started i started talking i was like (laughs) set the tone dude and i just leaned over and i was like so i'm planning on drinking later and my friend was gonna drive so i needed to see him drive my car and she's like oh i don't even know what that means even you're now. like my wife when we try to do fucking fast food. <sighs> oh, dude. Um, do you guys still have the shut up and just order the thing? I was like, I. And so she's like, give me your license. Give me both your licenses. And I was like, okay, it's my car, but he's. She's like, give me your license. She walks away. Fujak's like, what the fuck was that? <laughs> and I was like, I was trying to let her know that you know we're yeah. being responsible. And he's like, we're not being responsible. We're both on mushrooms. Shut the fuck up. She comes back. Probably 10 minutes later, and I'm not lying, hands us our licenses, and she goes, you guys got lucky today. So we just got a call. And she fucking left, and I was like, <sighs> it was the most, I did, it was the most, like, drop I've ever felt and being like, what the fuck, to being like, <sighs> I was, lo- it was, that was one of the best nights of drugs I've ever done in my life, because we got the cigarettes, went back to my house, my mom was gone, we just hung out. Did you grow up in Arizona? No, I grew up in Aurora, Colorado. Yeah, I thought, so. oh, oh yeah. that's right, yeah. I'm from Colorado. But you're a San so Francisco I, fan. Because my dad's from the Bay. Okay. So my parents broke up when I was five, my dad was in San Francisco, my mom was in Denver, all, from the time I was born, Niners, Giants, Warriors, and then when I was 10 years old, I was like, I need a team in Denver, I'm gonna be a Nuggets fan. And this is the first year it's ever paid off. Really? Every other year. I've been watching the Warriors have a dynasty. My 96-year-old grandmother, huge Dubs fan. She's like, Warriors! And you're like, shut up, you little bitch. Because they would always beat the Nuggets. And she'd be like, they did it again! And you're like, you're racist. I know you're racist. But she, uh, it was crazy. My dad, I remember being, my dad worked at a liquor store in Mill Valley. That's bad. Yeah, dude. He worked at a liquor store named Dan's Liquors. And I was always like, oh, because my name's Dan. It's like, nah, he was just an alcoholic. He was just a yeah, rabid alcoholic. Yeah, but- he goes, yeah, sure, whatever. Tell your mom <laughs> she's going to get that check, too. He, uh, I remember they, like, traded Tim Hardaway, I think, to the Heat. They, they traded away one of the TMC guys, run TMC. And I was like, ah, I don't know. I think I want to start, like, I liked them. I want, I'm mad he's gone. I think I'm going to be a Nuggets fan. And my dad was like, the Denver Nuggets? And I was like. <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to like the Nuggets. And then it was when Matumbo and them beat the Seattle Supersonics. Okay. So I was oh, like yeah. 10 or 11. And there was eight seed. We're, the Nuggets were the eight seed. Sonics were the one seed. And I was like, that fucking ruled. And I loved LaFonso Ellis. And I'd just like get into the Nuggets. And I could go to McNichols Arena and see him for fucking cheap. 
because yeah. they kind of sucked for a well they they did suck for a long time but it was weird because it was Niners because then all my other family members are Broncos fans and I'm like eh, fuck the Broncos I would have been a Bron how fun would it have been to be a Broncos fan I got to see a lot of Elway games that right. was John Elway's the fucking man John Elway's the fucking man you want to hear a there's, great story yes there's no hang on there's no better feeling in my life that I have I have a I have a, a few things that are a warm blanket to me and John Elway on a late Sunday afternoon running the Broncos down in the two-minute warning oh, yeah. to yeah. come back to win a game is a memory I have that happened, I have to say, probably ten times. It was it, it was, was every Sunday night when we're about to eat dinner, fucking yeah. my dad going, buddy, check this out. 4 p.m. game. I remember my dad's half-brother would take me to Bronco games. He had season tickets. Which half topper I bought him? Uh, bottom half. <laughs> <laughs> fucking real asshole. <laughs> now, nah, we were cool until he dipped, but... uh he took me to a game that I remember. And again, I'm a 49ers fan. And I was, this is how big of a Niner fan I was. When, when Joe Montana got traded to the yeah. Chiefs, my uncle took me to a Broncos Chiefs game and I wore Chiefs shit. I wore a Chief Joe shirt. I was like, oh, for real? Yeah, Joe Montana's a god. Dude. He's a god in my house. Like that, growing up, I got to grow up watching Joe Montana and Jerry Rice, which is like a lot of how kids grew up watching Tom Brady and like them where you're like, you don't understand that level of, deity which john elway is in denver john elway yeah. is a god in denver so this is a fun story so uh my buddy in middle school my best friend um he was in like we were in the group of friends he got to ball boy for the broncos he's now the head coach of the miami dolphins oh i know Mike that McDaniel. guy yeah i know that guy yeah i grew up with him seventh and eighth grade like thick as thieves he was just my buddy but he was a ball boy for the broncos so, dude, he told me this story, and I think I'm remembering this pretty accurate, the details of it. Halftime of the 98 AFC Championship game, McDaniel was in the locker room cleaning up, right, after yeah. the halftime speech. The, not, the Broncos were down, I almost said Niners. The Broncos were down, and they left. Like, everyone went to go on the field, and Elway hung back, and he said there was, like, soda machines, and he took a cup and filled it with Mr. Pibb, and then chugged it, and then went out and won the AFC Championship game. I'm like, him just pounding soda. I know it's not booze. I know yeah. it could be a lot more dangerous, but just the thought of having a delicious Mr. Pibb oh. and then beating the Jets in the AFC Championship game is fucking rules. Murdering a... Mr. Pibb's really good. It's... Yeah, it's... I mean, it's... It's the other Dr. Pepper. No, it's better than Dr. Pepper, in my Dr. Opinion. Pepper's way better than Mr. No, Pibb. No, 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 In fact, no, no, you no. would even kind of bring that argument. It's crazy. Mr. That's the most Florida shit you've ever said in your life. <laughs> Pibb, Pibb is better than Dr. Pepper? Dude, Mr. Pibb, when you, when no. I go to the... the I didn't uh, even put this big of a fight up about drunk driving. <laughs> 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 it was like, drunk driving, I'm like, well, sometimes you have a couple, you gotta get home. Mr. Pibb, I'm like, you shut your fucking mouth. <laughs> Dr. Pepper or nothing. When they have... They have Pib Zero at the at Jack in the Box where they have the big array where you can pick anything. Yeah. Dude, I can fuck up Mr. Pib. What I'll do is I'll even cheat and I'll murder a full real Mr. Pib first and then go diet. It's the classic coffee. You have a full caffeinated, then you have a decaf. I never have I've never had a decaf. Ever in your I've life? I've never had a decaf in my life. The third coffee. If I've had like two big ones, yeah. the third one I'll be like, ask if there's decaf. I'll try. Really? Is that decaf? No, no, it's not. It looks so good. It is. It looks so good. Just an iced coffee. For an me. iced coffee with cream looks so fucking good these days. I wonder what our parents, like, because my, my dad was like. It's a hot coffee. For hot them. coffee, just cream, little cream in it. Just God, hot coffee. That's why, that's why at the end, that's why the baby boomers right now are just really holding on to the power. Because they're like, fuck you guys. You guys got iced coffee. You guys were able to text. We just had to make phone calls and write letters. That's why they won't let go of the power because they're just mad. They're Do you like, think the oh. divorce rate would be the staggering number it is, 50%, had everyone met during Tinder? Yeah, I don't I yeah, I don't think marriage is that's a that's an old design that isn't yeah. built for Wait, are you are you getting married? I'm getting married. Yeah. So <laughs> it'll work. <laughs> but I'm saying like over there a lot of people get married for the wrong reason. Oh fuck. Yes. I'm I waited. I'm 40. Uh-huh. She's in her 30s. I think we waited. We both like waited until we had careers. We waited until we knew what we wanted. And then we were friends. And then we started dating. And you're like, oh, this fucking rules. Where, where did you guys meet? How'd you guys meet? Opie and Jim. 
No. Yeah, there's an episode of Opie and Jim with me, her, and Pete Davidson. Yeah. She almost got fucking railed. I saved that woman from getting a backyotomy. <laughs> <laughs> from Davidson? Yeah, Pete's like, oh, you can be with this guy who's super fun and he'll probably love you for the life. Or I could split you in half like a log of wood. <laughs> <laughs> he was telling a story to John Barenthal about how big his balls were. He was saying it so That's, casually. See, I think, honestly, if I'm fantasy booking Pete's package, <laughs> I'm taking big hog normal balls. Because I think big balls is just it's I like, think, it's too I, much luggage. I think he's got a... I, I don't think he has the big see like so big this is what all the women I've ever been with tell me big dicks are too much oh absolutely <laughs> oh I would never need that much cock no what you oh. want is like something medium oh yeah just a nice every woman gets real humble when she talks to you about what kind of dick she likes I but, like to flip it on them and let them know how big they are <laughs> yeah I'd be like, I love a fat pussy I love something I can oh, barely can feel. I tell you something I'm a little bit of a size king <laughs> they go what do you mean I love gapers. <laughs> I'm a, I'm a gape I'm a gapeaholic. Whoa, I can barely feel you know, it. Oh, you fucking hallway. Look at me. Look oh at my me. God. You, look at you, you crevasse. I go down and I go, hello. Yeah. Hello, hello. A little fun we have here. Move. Mind if I uh, mind if I drop a nickel and make a wish? <laughs> Give her a wink. Uh, where's that fucking clitoris? It's probably the size of a speed bag. Let me see that thing. I'm just telling you all you beef curtain queens out there, live it with pride. <laughs> Carry around your fat pussies. Beef curtain queens. <laughs> beef curtain queens. You old fucking dog <laughs> lip. <laughs> you old tired dog lip. Get out of here. What does Ralphie say? <laughs> Pussy looks like it's a horse reaching Dude, for a sugar cube. Ralphie May, man, was one of those guys where you could watch oh. and just he would kill you in a way. One of my favorite things, he used to do Ralphie and Friends at Moon Tower. Uh -huh. And he got vapes like before vapes were everywhere. He had weed vapes and he had like a machine, you know, that you'd be like, it looked like a time machine. You'd be like, boop, 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 boop. And he'd be like, yeah. hey, man, here you go. Hit this soda. And you'd be like, <laughs> and then you'd be on stage. You'd be like, but what am I doing? What is this? <laughs> but if you had gone, you would just sit on a chair and just, like, when you would host the show, because yeah. you couldn't, you know, yeah. go all the way downstairs and come back up. <laughs> but, dude, he was the man. He was the fucking, smoking weed with Ralphie May is one of my favorite things I've ever done. I've, I, 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 I did uh, Paul and Young Ron's, Paul and Young Ron was, uh, you know Paul Castanova? No. He's out of Miami. He does. Like, if you ever done the Miami or probably Fort Lauderdale or, or Hollywood, you've, done, you've probably done his show. Okay. But it was used to be called Paul and Young Ron, and they used to do a trip to the Bahamas every year. So he asked me to do the trip to Bahamas, me and Ralphie, and we do stand-up. We yeah. do a show, and uh, and then you do the, do the radio show with them live, and you just hang out and say hi to fans. And so we get down there the first night. It's me and Leanne. And Leanne's like, I think I'm going to stay in the room. It's late. You go down. And I sit down to do radio with Ralphie. We're going to pre-record it. And he's like, hey, player, you want a lollipop? And I was like, what a weird. Yeah, a lollipop? Like, Fuck you. What is this, prison? Yeah, I was like, uh, I'm good. Hold like, my hand. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Gives you like a prison task. <laughs> Look down at my shoes. Now you're mine. That's how Bahamas <laughs> comedy works. <laughs> I was like, I was like, no. And he was like, oh, you should have one. And I was like, oh, and everyone had lollipops. And I was like, okay. And I was like, what the fuck are we doing? Yeah, it's like a rave. Yeah. And so I, as soon as I put it in my mouth, I was like, wait, is there something in this lollipop? Oh. And he was like, oh, shit, that's hash, baby. That's I, a high end sativa indica. Yeah. You about to see. I didn't know you get wet. <laughs> he yeah. fucking goes training day on you. <laughs> so, I didn't know you like to get, you like to party. <laughs> I took it out of my mouth immediately and was like terrified the whole night. So I was like, I didn't, back then it was like before edibles were yeah. huge. So you didn't know like. I, there was no dosage on it. Yeah. No, it was just a lollipop, dude. I but I, I would throughout the night just go like this, and then be like, ee, 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 I've always ee, been that dirt. way with weed though, because I like I think I have gotten too high before, where I just like to be a little high. The older I get, the more um, the older I had that realization re 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 like recently, where I was like, I always thought I smoked to relax, and then now I realize the older I get, the higher I get, the more anxiety I get, and so I'm like, hey, just have a hit. Yeah, just have like two hits. But I used to be like, I'll smoke. We'll smoke a whole eighth in a night. This oh, you is great. Georgia said, Georgia and Isla were like, how do Dan and Jay smoke as much as they do and function? They're still like good on stage. They're oh, like, that's we were born in the darkness, murdered by it. <laughs> yeah, it was fucking. I used to like Jay was the first person I met that could smoke and go up and fucking like you would watch him get high on stage and it, the show would just be like. 
you would, it would be reflective and it's like he would ask like funnier odder questions yeah Dude, i got high with him one time on the stairs of the cellar and then jay walked on stage and was just killing it was just like casually killing and then mike vecchione walked through the showroom and he had like a sweater up and big jay goes Oh, Vecchione in a smart zip up. It must be fall. He goes, tell me you walked into Old Navy and pivoted on your ankle, turned around and went, I'll take all of them. But he was just doing that for me in the moment. Dude, it was so, it made me laugh so hard. I was like, he's so fucking quick off his feet. He really is probably the, like, when you when you talk about crowd work, like I, I love the crowd work clips that go around. Yeah. Like the summer good. Some I go, why don't you guys just script them? I bet they'd be better. Yeah. Like I don't need them to be real. Yeah. Like it's it doesn't see it doesn't seem like a lot of them are real. So like it seems like it's something you've had prepared. Yeah. I heard the best one, the best crowd work clip I've seen. I wish I could remember the guy's name. He was he was a comic and he said he was trying to sell tears for his tour. I wish I could find out who it was. He said to the guy in the front row, what do you guys, what do you do? And the guy goes, I work on the railroad. And the guy goes, oh, are your, all, are your hours all the live long day? <laughs> That's fun. That's very fun. He was, he's a New York comic. He's very funny. He has like blondish hair and it looks like not the best haircut, but he's very funny. Andy Haynes? No. <sighs> Never mind. Let's not guess names. Uh, yeah, we're going to start guessing people. Dude. Steve Hofstetter? Yeah. <laughs> you start guessing. Well, what hurts is when your name's guessed. It's kind of like you were talking about with the booze thing. Yeah. And then you put someone next to him and you go, oh, come on. Dude, I remember <laughs> Comedy Central dot com i remember this so vividly because you know when you start like when you get added to like comedy central.com back in the day you were like damn i'm on comedy central.com yeah comedy central.com had this thing where it was like it would show your profile did the clips of like live at gotham or your half hour or whatever you did and then it'd be th- show three comics if you liked him you'll like these three dude I think it was Nate and I would type in names and see what three you would get because it hurt. There was always at least one or two uh, that you're like, I'm not like that fucking guy at all. What the <laughs> fuck is that? That's the algorithm. Like, you would get so mad. Yeah. Oh, fuck. That was brutal. I remember us doing that, though, just having nothing to do on a Wednesday and just, like, sitting at someone's house trying to write jokes. And you're like, type in this person's name. And you're like, yeah, they are like that. I, I remember looking at the internet saying, I wish someone cared enough to put clips up of me yeah because they'd I'd be like people would have clips of zach galifianakis just from their phone and it would be online and it would be fucking mesmerizing yeah of zach just destroying and and you'd be like god man i want to get that big and then you realize for everyone like zach probably didn't like all of them no he was and like and like people just what are you looking up oh uh, jeffrey asmus is that who it is dude jeffrey asmus is the fucking man yeah, Jeffrey, he's sorry. got a brand new hour out right now called Alpha. He is so funny. I think that's who you might be talking about. That is, that is, yeah. that is, that is. Yeah, dude, go check him out if you're watching this right now. Jeffrey Asmus is so fucking funny. He has this awesome joke about having sex in your in the bedroom you grew up in. Because he, he, I took him out on the road for a little bit. Oh, for real? I mean, that motherfucker. You want to talk about following somebody. You're like, it gave me the old fucking tim dylan shane gillis jitters where i'm like fuck i'm gonna have to work because you just hear them just through the wall you know what i mean oh I, that happened to me wait don't don't i keep changing i'm fucking so yeah, we're hot with this this is it baby okay good <laughs> this is duck and roll yeah okay. we might pick stuff back up some stuff <sighs> it goes gone away. into the ether the angels listen to it yeah that is that's podcast fodder for another day <laughs> friend i when we went like i knew i knew shane was funny right but like, I, I I knew he was funny when yeah. he did fully loaded the first year. He was like killing, but he wasn't like he didn't get the pop when he got on stage the way he gets now. Yeah, like he was just going on stage and some people smattering, and then and he murder. And and I I think we had it was like me, him, Big J, and David Tell would close out the shows. Right? Yeah, we only did like two weeks. He was on all of them, so that was the lineup. And uh, and so then we did the Super Bowl. We did uh, in Phoenix. In you, Phoenix. you, me, him, and Norman, right? Me, him and Mark Norman, and uh, and I, I think Dave Williamson too. And it, I said the first night, I was like, "Yeah, uh, why don't you go, Dave, Mark, then Shane, then I'll go." And then uh, Mark's like, "You sure?" And I was like, "Yeah." He's like, "Okay, cool." 
And then Mark goes up and does really well. Yeah. And I was like, wow, Mark's gotten like fucking, I haven't seen him perform in a while. He's got all new stuff. Shane walks on stage and the pop is so big. I'm like, I'm like, whoa. What's, what's happening? Yeah. And I, I remember I was in the green room and I walked out and around because it was so loud in the green room. That's crazy. That I went, wow. And then I walked out. He's getting and Martin Lawrence on tour with Chris Rock pops. He murdered so cleanly. Yeah. And then was like, you know, Shane's, you know, there's, there's like, okay, there's horror comics, and then there's like jobbers who like, yeah. that's my time, I'm. yeah, and walked off in the middle of his standing ovation, like yeah, they're, they're yeah. standing up and he just walks off, yeah, yeah. and he's he comes back and Shane's got like a, he'll do like, this is so you all have to know Shane to get this, but he does this like serious face and then he'll break and be like, wow, that was a good one, yeah, <laughs> you know, and he's like, no, they're good, they're good, they're good, and I was like, yeah, yeah, and then he's like. Oh. <laughs> He and, uh, and I had a I had a fucking I had dude, some heavy lifting. It's my uh, most of my I would credit the reason my HBO special is as good as it came out, which I was very. It's the only thing I've really ever done that I'm like, besides Bonfire, yeah, that I'm like truly proud of. That yeah, I'm like that was some fucking cool shit. I would give some credit to the fact that I was following Shane though that entire two years getting ready for that and brother. The boys always had it in the tank. I hear. He, I can tell you weekends. I can tell you weekends of two people. I remember the show that I was on stage and I was like, I bet they would like it if I brought them back. Tim Dillon in Vermont on the early. In Vermont. In Vermont. Early show Friday buried me so hard that like I remember being on stage being like, I'm going to get through this. It wasn't like I was bombing, but yeah. I was like, but I. I knew how much better and like I was like I could probably bring him back up right now and they'd be like yeah and that makes you want to eat a gun yeah it makes you want to eat a gun I don't care who you are everybody's got enough ego in this game that you're like that and fucking Shane late show Albany oh wow at the improv he uh, killed funny bone he killed so fucking hard that I was like that ah. and one time we worked Shane was featuring me in Philly at helium and that is all Madden at fucking Pittsburgh. That's all yeah, Madden yeah. at Kansas City. It's fucking like, that was a tough, tough go. But I love that. I think that shit's awesome because yeah. you do that show and then you're like, oh, well, I got a lot. I got a lot to work on because this guy is, you know, Jeffrey Asmus, same kind of feeling. I, uh, Acme, I, he featured for me at Acme and he had a set that he hung up there that I was like, <laughs> like he came back i was like <laughs> i gotta write jokes oh. like i have to fucking write in bag in, in bag is hilarious in bag in uh, we were in canada we were in i uh, probably toronto and in in an arena in bag did crowd work to the sections 305 mm -hmm. that's uh, there's a bunch of fucking miners up there that's but, you know i don't know but he was killing so hard that and he's from Canada. So they yeah. so he's doing a little inside baseball to Northern them. speak. <clears throat> oh, they loved him so much that when I got on stage, I I, I thought I could bring him back out. Yeah. If I brought him back out with me, they'd like me better. Yeah. If that is and, the, and that is exactly show. the feeling. Cause you're going like, I know what you really want. And if you were like in a polite way, especially in Canada, they'd probably be like, No offense, bud. Can you bring back in? Yeah. And you'd be like, how about I bring him back? Like, that's how I felt in Vermont. And in, like Albany, if I would have been like, let's get Shane back up here. That would have been like, <gasps> you know, and same yeah. in Vermont. We'd be like, damn, come say a few words. That used to be a, that used to be a way to shut down a, uh, 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 a strong road act. You don't, you don't, oh, dude, you I, never had to, you never had to do the, like the rough, rough road act guys. Yeah. Yes. What no. I've had is. Wait, who, who? Oh, uh, like, oh, Long Island comics. There's a oh, lot of Long Island yeah, comics. Yeah, you're right, you yeah. go out there and they're like, what, you fucking headlining and you're from the city? Watch this. What are you, from Ron Concomo, you stupid slut? And then you're just like, <laughs> and then you go up there and you're like, my mom was a single mom. And they're like, shut the fuck up. They just don't give a shit. I was on the subway the other day. Yeah, you guys ever ride the sub? You fucking, we're driving out here on the LIE, you fucking idiot. Uh, Do you put out fires or not? Yeah, yeah, fuck. Where'd you vote? Which side? Blue or red? Um, but there were 
the, the, the one I had happened to me a couple times. How old were you when you started headlining? I was like 28, 29. I was, when I first started headlining, um, I had to be, I had to be 30. Did you ever get an older feature that oh, resented you yeah, for it? Yeah. 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 Those a lot the of ones. them. A Those are the ones them. that are trying to put so much mustard on the ball that they'll be like, I just remember this one time, this guy, I think it might have been in Atlanta, but he was like, How old are you? And I was like, I'm th- I'm 30. And he was like, Psh. I was headlining when you were a kid. And immediately I, I it took everything in my willpower to be like, Well, you must suck because now you're featuring. <laughs> but they would be like so vindictive and be like, Bro. Oh yeah. And it is. It's just like you're an old guy and there's like a young. I know I'm going to be opening, like, dude, I would open for Shane in a fucking second. The guy's doing huge, yeah, beautiful theaters. Yeah. Oh, I got to take a weekend off a of funny bone to go open. Like, I don't have ego of that. It's, it's, there's, there should be no ego because I, yeah. can, I consistently, I reached out to a bunch of people. Yeah. This tour, because it's, it's all arenas. And yeah. I was like, do you guys want to, because it puts you in front of a whole 12,000 people you, that may not know who you are. I'll tell you right now, I saw that on the Fully Loaded. I did, I did, you know, we did four cities and even in that limited amount of dates, I got a lot of people being like, dude, I saw you fully loaded, fucking loved it, dude, follow you. And they do that thing like we were talking about earlier where they, I, I went and watched your Comedy Central Hour, I watched your HBO special and you're like, oh, fuck yeah. It's, it's, it's not bad. Like, it's not bad. Like, if, 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 I mean, I, I like, if, if, if Sebastian said, hey, do you want to go open for me someday? Fluffy, you know, Fluffy hit me up to open for him for, uh dodger stadium and i was like i was like yeah yeah and but i ended up having to do a show that weekend out of town the way and i was like i'd open for fluffy in a heartbeat i would mean seventy five thousand people yeah seventy five thousand people seventy five thousand people do not know me in los angeles dude i we're at jfl toronto and i was doing like a you know small this is like 2019 i was doing like a small fucking room or whatever and then nate was doing big theater or whatever and nate's like you should surprise open for me and i was like oh fuck that'd be awesome yeah immediately i was like um, I got a couple jokes. I don't really know if they're clean. And I remember one of them, like, I call crying face coming. And he goes, I mean, what are we doing, buddy? He goes, you know, the way Nate, Nate's like, oh, come on, man. And I was yeah. like, yeah, you're right. All right, never mind. He stayed out of the fray of like comedy drama by moving to, you'd think if you moved to Tennessee, you'd be bitter watching people you know pop and yeah. stuff but and you look be, at him and look at what nationals became look at like yeah, nationals, he was there before that happened i mean nate's been nate is nate loves calling shit he called nashville like from the time i can remember it was always he was always him and laura were always very open about like we're gonna get back to tennessee and when he moved out here he was living like way south really yeah and then he started shit started popping off with fallon and nate was like i think we're gonna move to nashville he's like but not tell anybody and for two years he was acting like he was living in la and he was living in nashville I he would tell a couple people i i I'm but now of, it's like yeah move to nashville you can like move there it's like austin you're like i mean austin always was a place you could move everyone's gonna be in austin soon but but there's like, no reason for people not to live in austin right now like I, that's the thing that's killing me is like oh i'm fine i like new york I, New York's, I mean, New York's the mecca of stand up, and it's where talented. I don't mean this like, I don't mean that like talented comics aren't, that don't know anything about comedy aren't moving to Austin. Yeah. But not everyone is thinking Austin first. There's, yeah. The majority of young, talented artists are going to move to New York or LA first. I, I would do, if I were young, I would do Austin before I do LA. Um, I would, well, because I think Austin would be a good place where like, like I started in Tucson. And then I went Tucson to New York, and I had to fucking completely change my shit. Oh, yeah. Oh, I was so road hacky because I was doing, like, Monday nights, the Desert Diamond Casino. So I'm not doing Stanhope shit. What was funny is Stanhope's the god in, like, Tucson. Oh, yeah. Because he lives in Bisbee. an hour away from it. He lives in Bisbee. And also, like, this is, like, 2004, so it's all about burnt CDs, and we're, like trading stanhope albums like that was like a big thing there was a rumor this is like before everyone was on social media there's a rumor he might do a one-nighter at laughs and you'd be like or the reality or the, like uh like with the theater downtown club congress you'd be like, he, you'd be like i heard stanhope's gonna do club congress and you'd be like oh shit so i still get weird around him i still like when i see stanhope i'm like 
because I I'm still I got Tucson brain, and I'm That's like crazy. remember all that being like, dude, Stanhope was the fucking guy, because he was just doing bits. So you would see guys in Tucson trying to be Stanhope, but they're not funny. So they're doing like government bits, and you're like, dude, this is tucson you have to be like homeless people are fucking stupid and they're like yeah <laughs> because they want to party but they don't want to like you can't get too crazy yeah. this isn't brooklyn and it was funny watching people do like stanhope impressions where you're like dude i don't think you should be breaking down the iraq war i saw so many i saw so many stanhope mitch hedberg and david tell impressions mattel was big dane cook was big for a while uh there were a, uh i will i will cop to that i had i had jokes where i would go i had a joke <clears throat> that i wrote in scotland uh, in front of Patrice, yeah. and it happened on the plane. Uh, I got cut off on the plane, and instead of, as she was cutting me off, I put my finger to her lips and went, "Shh." Yeah, very funny. I was really fucked up. Very funny. And Patrice, and, uh, out of a drunk man, that's very funny. Patrice was like, um, and we got back, and the next morning we wake up, and he's like, "You, t- you touched her face." <laughs> he was like, "You know that, like that's." He was really obsessed with how you, you when you touch someone's face you take their power yeah you take their energy you take their energy that's crazy and it kept going on he's like you gotta doing that to people rubbing their cheeks and so that night i did it on stage with a flight attendant i said <sighs> what well, stewardess i'm sure yeah and then he's and then the next morning he said there's no power in a stewardess no one respects him yeah he goes got to be a cop yeah and i went really and he said yeah and he goes you should do it tonight as if a, a cop i did it and it didn't work and then the next day I'm thinking about it and my, my go-to was like how would a tell do it yeah right yeah or how would stanhope do it how would dane cook do it yeah so i came up with a mashup of how dane cook and and david tell would do it you know what cops hate when you touch their faces yeah. here's what i do here's what i do here's what i do okay cop he's like walking the window walking the window gets up he's like excuse me you know and i and it was like a total rip off of everyone else's yeah. style because yeah. i didn't know how to do a joke yeah and then, and then you and then no one could tell no one saw it Dude, uh, you know, you know what some of your the, friends do? Because I yeah. used to, I, there was a big seg. There was like 2010, 2011. I was like obsessed with Burr. Like I was just watching everything Burr, anything I could find on Burr. I would, I would watch, you know, and I'd already loved him from New York, but like, and then at one point, Nate was like, hey, buddy, you're getting a little Burry. Like you got to stop watching him. Like, I can see it. I would like be shifting the mic stand. Oh, yeah. You know, I'd be like, oh, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, I don't talk like that. Yeah. I don't have a Massachusetts <laughs> accent. Why am I doing that? But it is like you see the people, you see people kind of play in their style or like do their style. And some people, a lot of people come out of it. Some people stay in it and they yeah. don't realize they're doing it. But you know who's the new guy? Who? Shane. I've seen a lot of sh- people do Shane. Really? A lot of double mic touches. I tell them that all the time. I'm like, oh, dude, that's, how you, that's a sign you know you're over. He's got his he one hand behind his back. Is Which is, we, I call that, I jokingly call that with Shane and Nate, because Nate does it too. I call it the Admiral. I go, oh, look at you standing like the Admiral. Yeah, Shane, does, Nate does it too. They put their hand behind their back. And they're Nate's like, stand-up's fascinating to me. It's, because it's, it's. Watching it happen, watching it happen, like uh, as someone that's like, my favorite story of it, and this is true, he called me on Christmas. We're like talking on Christmas, and he's at his mom's house. This is like a couple years ago. And he's like, my mom doesn't have great jelly. That's insane, right? He goes, that's insane. And I'm like, yeah, that's pretty crazy. Like, grape jelly is like, yeah. you know, pretty standard or a form of jelly just to make a sandwich or whatever. He's like, crazy. And they're like, we're talking. And then like six months later, I see him and he's doing a bit about how someone doesn't have ketchup. And he's like, I changed it to ketchup because more people have ketchup. And it was like our convert, but it just like murdered. Yeah. In a way, he had an old bit about lewis fighting a guy at mcdonald's nate has this joke about how he played a prank on his friend friend and he took a bite of a burger and wrapped it back up that was me and nate that did that really and at a time we were both trying to tell the story on stage if we were both on the same but nate's just came out so clean like yeah not clean in the sense of language clean like crisp crisp moved right along every moment had a fucking great tag or a punchline, and i was like dude that's your story but it always is awesome because it's like a fame. It's one of his famous bits, and it's like kind of cool to be like, you know, I was written out of that. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I was the fifth Beatle. It's like fun to be like, I'm the one that took the bite out of Lewis's sandwich before he lost his mind. Did he really? Dude, he really did. 
This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Do you ever find that just as you're trying to fall asleep, your brain suddenly will not stop talking to you? Your thoughts are racing right as you're in bed. The most inopportune moment to have these racing thoughts. It turns out a great way to make these racing thoughts go away is to talk them through. Therapy gives you a great place to do that exactly. So you can get these negative cycles out of your head and possibly give you a little mental and emotional peace. This happens to me almost nightly, almost nightly, I cannot shut up. You know, it's so funny. I wonder if it happens to everyone because it, it doesn't happen to Leanne. Well, actually, it does happen to Leanne. Leanne does does stay awake, but hers is making lists of things she needs to do. Mine is with inner dialogues about inadequacy and self-esteem. <laughs> this is horrible. Whatever yours are, Therapy can help. If you're thinking of starting therapy, give BetterHelp a try. It's entirely online, designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. Just fill out a brief questionnaire to get matched with a licensed therapist, and you can switch therapists at any time for no additional charge. I only do online therapy. It is so freaking convenient. I cannot tell you. And the word flexible is synonymous with convenient. If it doesn't work, you text them that morning, you can't make it, and this isn't a person that isn't like, great, so I have an hour stuck in my office. What am I supposed to do with that hour? Get a break from your thoughts with BetterHelp. Visit betterhelp.com slash birth today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash birth. Today's podcast is sponsored by NutriSense. Listen, your glucose levels can significantly impact how your body and mind feel and function. Take that from a guy who's been in ketosis now for 50 days. NutriSense lets you analyze your glucose levels in real time in response to food, exercise, stress, and sleep. And if you are a junkie like me when it comes to workout information or health information, this thing is insane. The second I put it on, the first thing I did, well, I had to, you got to wait an hour, and then it starts registering, and then I checked my, my glucose levels. 88, 88. Then I worked out. They dropped. I'm telling you, it's insane. It's super easy. It goes on the back of your arm, and it helps you make better choices about what foods to eat. As a result, I'm telling you, I have been losing weight. Well, I've been losing weight. I've been losing weight. I've been busting my ass. I put on my NutriSense, and I, listen, I don't know if it was a NutriSense or just the workout, but I came in. I'm watching what I eat. I went to dinner. I was like, is there sugar in that? Literally take a bite and then just watch the results. I feel more stable throughout the day. I feel like I have more energy. I have less brain fog. My sleep is through the roof. And I'll tell you right now, I am not craving sugars. Watching my sugar intake and making sure that I have a low glucose level, I'm in ketosis, I have no craving for sugar, which is unheard of in my life. Right now, visit Nutrisense.com slash Bert to save $30 and get one month of free nutritionist support. That's Nutrisense.com slash Bert. I'm the one that took the bite out of Lewis's sandwich before he lost his mind. Did he really? Dude, he really did. We were after Stand Up New York. We went to McDonald's and Lewis was like, you guys have Diet Coke? And they're like, no, we don't have Diet Coke. He's like, what kind of fucking place doesn't have Diet Coke? I'm going to go get a Diet Coke. And he orders a cheeseburger and a quarter pounder. And then he pays for it and goes to the bodega to get a Diet Coke. So Nate immediately is like, you know, it'd be hilarious if we took a bat of one of his sandwiches. <laughs> I love and I was like, dude, I'll do that. I can picture Nate giggling at that, and too. Yeah. And he's like, dude, you should do it. And he, and honestly, Nate goes, man, I don't know if I'm going to be able to sit through it if it, once he sees it. So the, the order comes up. We take it. We all sit down. Lewis still isn't back. I unfold it and take like a cartoon bite where you see the ridges of my teeth. And I fold it back up and we put it. And I remember one of them were in a box. And the one we took, it was like a cheeseburger that was wrapped. Dude, Lewis sits down and he, he doesn't know. Yeah. So he just like sits down he's like can you believe these fucking pussies don't have diet coke and he just goes and he goes and grabs the box and nate goes and like he's like you can just nate's like waiting and he goes oh man and like we're both like ready for it to go and then dude lewis flips the cheeseburger <laughs> opens it and he goes are you fucking serious are you fucking serious? And Nate goes, Lyle's calling. And he gets up, he's laughing, and he goes outside the McDonald's, and Lewis goes, 
what the fuck? What the fuck? And he stands up. He goes, you Dominicans think this is funny? And starts going. And I go, Lewis, 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 Lewis. I get up and stop Lewis. Dude, Lewis is like, what, you guys did that? And you Dominicans think this is funny? Dude, I swear to God, he said something like almost exactly that. Dude, Nate comes from outside. And it, Nate had a flip phone. I remember Nate, it was back in the day of the flip phone. Yeah. Nate comes in and he goes, Lewis, are you serious, you psycho? Like laughing. <laughs> and then Nate turned it into like an all-timer bit. But uh, Nate like made it so that story's so funny. You can just tell that story. But yeah. the way Nate made it into a joke is it fucking moves. So it's like boom, 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 boom. And then he's got a great fucking punchline on it. Where it's it, he does this thing that's like he will say the 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 crazy thing and then point it out from our perspective. Yeah, like it's what, so great. You know what my favorite the one he did on uh netflix on the stand-ups where he's talking about going to target and trying to get a hammock and he goes a hammock and the guy goes hammond he goes am i saying this wrong hammond <laughs> dude i think of that joke a lot like I, I can't i cannot look at conditioner in a hotel oh, room think about the kurt metzger thing think about the dude kurt metzger i thing. thought that's crazy you said that today <laughs> today I when i took my shower yeah. i looked at the conditioner and i went fucking kurt rubbing it rubbing it on like a lotion kurt that's kurt just conditioner is this lotion <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> yeah dude dude nate odd man the best part is like seeing nate become who he's become with also seeing where he came from i know that's like corny as shit and people are like fucking good but i'm telling you he's like a close friend of mine yeah it's just like you're like dude he deserves this because i've done gigs with him that are nightmarish i've done like i used to open for nate and we do a lot of soldier Joel gigs and some of them were real tough really some clubs we worked juniors last laugh in erie i anytime i see nate post that he sold out an arena or a theater i go he earned that in erie pennsylvania yeah because he put out a comedy central presents and he was headlining wasn't selling any tickets and i he was like hey this club this club will it's clean but you could say shit. That's what he told me. He goes, the worst thing you could say is shit. And I'm like, let's go. Yeah. This will be awesome. Now, he had a car, so we drove. We was fucking playing Call of Duty on Xbox, hooking it up in the, and drinking 18 packs. <laughs> it, it was the shit. Yeah. It's January, right? Erie's very cold in January. Yeah. Big Steeler town. Really? So we pull into town, and uh, we're there on Thursday. And the owner is like, all right, here's the deal. Um... I was like, where's the MC? And he goes, well, we have a thing here where you could put your friend's names into a raffle and then they get drawn and then they MC. I'm like, what? And so he's like, this is your MC. And he shows us this guy. He looks like a mini Bill Burr, but he's wearing like a gray suit. He's more red. Yeah. And he's got a necklace. He's got a lateral lift. So he talks like this. I go, how many times have you done comedy? He goes, oh, man, I've only done karaoke a couple times. And I was like, do you emceeing? <laughs> and he's like, I guess. And I go, so here's all you got to say is from Comedy Central's Live at Gotham, dance odor. Yeah. And, then I'll, that's, and then bring me up and I'll do 20. Hell, I'll even bring Nate up. Don't worry about it. Dude, this guy gets on stage. He's never done stand up. They turn up. He gets up on there. He goes fuck man these lights is bright as fuck oh he goes what the fuck dude this is fucking crazy what the fuck and i'm like looking at nate i'm like i can only say shit i can only say shit this guy's saying fuck nate's like dude this is wild the guy you know like college intros how they always fuck it up yeah guy goes dan soder from comedy central give it up you know whatever yeah this dude goes and sits in the front row with his family starts heckling me Starts heckling me halfway through. Starts talking back at me. And I look down and I go, dude, are you fucking kidding me? What are you talking about? So then Nate goes up. Show's fine. The owner goes, yeah, it turned out it's tough tonight. It's a big room. So it's like 400. Yeah. He's like, it's tough tonight. But early show Saturday sold out Christmas party. And we're like, let's go. So that's the gem in the distance. Yeah. At least we know Saturday we have a full fucking house. Maybe have a fun show. <laughs> that's Saturday. Nate and I are at the Buffalo Wild Wings, which I'm sure he still frequents, and we're eating. Everyone does. It's Everyone the best does. in the fucking world. Especially during football season. Oh, my God. And this is playoff football. We're there for the early playoff game, and we're eating wings. And we're like, this is fun. And then just to Nate, just to sports fans, I go, who's the late game? He goes, uh, oh, it's Pittsburgh-Baltimore. And I go, eh, that's not going to. 
it's not going to affect the show you think and he's like i didn't even think of that till you just said that and i'm like oh and then the energy changes to like oh fuck this thing that we thought was going to be incredible yeah dude we show up there's probably 300 people crammed into the bar watching the two tvs in the showroom a scattered 75 to 100 people in a very large room yeah the owner's like Steelers, <laughs> and we're like what they're loud the mc was like a regular comic they got a regular guy for friday saturday yeah mc go dude my shit times out halftime they all go in the showroom they all get sat during my set i get like 20 minutes with them i have a fucking fun show dude i get off stage i go check i'm like is the game over and nate goes that was halftime third quarter they all leave as nate goes on oh my god i sat in the showroom and watched nate set dude he would get the people there going because he's hilarious yeah he would get him going and then the fucking wave if pittsburgh did something it would be like just shooting through the wall and nate's like i mean you just I like mean. it was like watching him build a sandcastle and watching waves just repeatedly knock it down every time you get to a place boom it was brutal it oh. was watching that i was like dude that was you've earned every amount that show was so brutal do you think that people do you think that people realize that like guys like sebastian and joe coy and segura and like they're like do you think they realize do you think because sometimes i look at like i look at joe coy and i go yeah. i forget that he had hell gigs yeah i forget that he's bombed yeah you know like i forget because he's so fucking money whenever he performs yeah and he's so confident like i forget i forget about that like i but I it's know, it's I, always like i always look at it like um you know in boxing where you like see a guy and he's like fucking 32 and oh and you're like yeah. oh, he's unbelievable and he's like yeah, his uh, amateur record was like 96 and three and you're like so there's three people that have beat him yeah there's like three people same way with hell gigs there's people that have seen us in unfortunate situations oh. and been like not a fan don't care can't do nothing and you're like yeah but you should see me on a good night yeah on a good night i'm fucking cooking it's almost it's almost unbelievable to yourself when you have when you have one of those shows where you bomb so bad miami improv that you go <sighs> miami then, in general miami is oh that's I, an away game i will i'm like you don't i i go down there and i still to this day remember leanne being pregnant with isla and me bombing so hard it was when i was still wearing shirts and the sweat no beard the sweat dripped off my lip to this lip and i went i was sweating so bad and it went off my chin onto my black shirt and or navy blue shirt and it and it colored it and the oh. whole room went ooh. oh dude flop sweats i bombed at the cellar about seven months ago and i didn't get spots so i asked liz i was like hey can i get can i get a spot like i'm in town and she's like yeah can you go first on the early show i was like yeah go first on the early show a bunch of jokes i want to run oh buddy oh boy buddy the first spot at the cellar is pretty tough yeah it's hosting at the cellar and and, and doing first spot at the cellar pretty fucking tough you have to do stuff that's like tried and true you have to win them over yeah because late in the show you can do new shit and they're fucking rocking dude i bombed so bad really and I, I can't see that you were so fucking undeniable during fully loaded oh thanks man i did this joke about mass shootings and i hit the punchline and i had been working on it and it, sometimes it really worked sometimes it yeah. didn't and it got nothing and this guy to the side goes that's not funny like in such a direct way that i went like <laughs> <laughs> and then i just finished the set and i went and sat in the back hallway and just was like staring at the ground yeah. and the waiters there rule like they rule yeah and one of the waiters came out and he was like that was impressive he was like that was impressive dude he goes you could have pandered he's like i watched you i watched you choose not to pander dude i got out of there i called katie i called shane i had to walk to new york comedy club on the east village oh. and that whole walk i was like ba -ba 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 -ba. remember when i got in the pool at fully loaded and i couldn't talk yeah. that was me on the phone with shane being like oh, I'm fucking about, i don't know why i fucking i tried to joke and it fucking didn't work but i just it was such a bomb and it's like that's what i love about comedy is sometimes it'll sneak up on you and you just are like 
Yeah. It's like how MMA records are more towards 500 than like boxing. Where like boxing, it's like 40, you're like 42 and one. Yeah. MMA, you're like nine and seven. And you're like, that guy's still one of the best. And you're like, oh, comedy, you just take a fucking, there's shows people have been at of ours where we've just gotten ear holed. And you're like, and when you, when you, when like seeing those with like Nate or seeing those, like being friends with like, talking to jay or ari or shane and you're like remember this i did this gig and i fucking ate it but you forget like you weren't you were around but like not like a re- no you hadn't started stand up dane cook changed the game with killing oh dude joe list the way joe list talks about dane cook because joe started in boston yeah right as dane he was in la but he was coming to boston and like doing the comedy connection yeah at faneo hall and list was like you've never you've never seen anything he, said he like used it. to walk on the tables like a tyrannosaurus rex yeah in like a bruins jersey and list is like it fu-. it's like that the, you know boston pride how they're like we fucking did it but he's yeah. like he fucking was murdering he was there he was theirs yeah he was yeah. theirs he would go i remember watching people like Attell would bomb mitch hedberg would bomb People There's would, stories of Mitch Hedberg, like the story about his half hour that they gave him a half hour of a comedy central and he bombed and they were like, what the fuck? And then they he was like, we've got to keep recording. You got to give us something. And then he murdered with the back half. Yeah. He had to see sat down on the stage. Yeah, dude. He was awesome. Yeah, I heard that. I heard that before he did Letterman, he liked to chug vodka like right before he walked out so that it hit him when he was on stage. That's fun that's kind of cool yeah there is a there is a suicidal part of it where like if i were to burn it up what a way to go yeah what a fun way to go no i actually i take this back i've i've, I've watched people drink themselves to death like i've i've seen it from the sidelines never like yeah i've seen it intimately i've, I've seen it intimately i've seen it intimately and and uh it's it's not i i, I think comfort wise uh, so i think the way alcohol works it numbs you no but you're it doesn't i think the drinking yourself to death i think there's an uncomfort in that there's a well shit man i watched my dad the last time i saw him he had cirrhosis and that was like was he still drinking no he was he was on i mean he was like weeks away from dying and really yeah he had the gut because your liver you know it like is filled with fluid so you get yeah. you get a pregnant belly but you're fucking he was jaundiced i remember his forehead was sharp and he was he was yellow he was like pure jaundice from his fucking kidneys and from all the bile and shit. And it was like, Oof. dude, you're like, yeah, this was a guy that was like, he had a mustache, was like big guy, like six one, but kind of a bigger yeah. guy, big personality. And then seeing him like that, and he was like, like I, I remember turning the corner at my grandma's apartment in Lake County. Like I turned the corner and I was like, that might be the worst thing I've ever seen in my life. I like turned the corner and I was like, oh, fuck. Like, it was so real. Yeah. It was so real at that moment. I was like, I, I had to fake it and go to the bathroom. I was like, oh, I got to go to the bathroom. And I just sat there like, what the fuck? Is cirrhosis a death sentence? Yeah. It's like, your liver eating itself. You have to have a liver transplant. It means, really? your li- yeah, your liver's turned on itself. Oh, maybe this is conversation. We should change the subject. On. <laughs> yeah. But I'm saying it's it, what it is, is it, it, it showed me, like, I've had friends of mine who had dads that were like fun drunks and stayed fun drunks and yeah. they drank longer than me eventually coming around to it. But I think for me, it took that for me to be like, okay, that's where that fucking door ends. Yeah. I mean, I'm still smoking weed at a rate that I'm like, I'm escaping. I'm not sober by any means. Yeah. Not all the time, but that fun shit, I still see the fun in it. Even though I've seen that dark side of it, yeah. I still see the like, like you're talking about Hedberg doing the vodka thing and you're like, oh yeah. I fucking I could, I could enjoy that. I could fucking do that. Yeah. I'm not like saying it's gonna bring me back, but you're like having to appreciate you know, it's like uh when you're in a committed relationship, you could still see a hot girl and be like, look at that. Yeah. But you're not gonna be like, hey, can I fuck you? You're just gonna be like, Well, look at that. That's that looks pretty enjoyable. And I think that's like people don't understand that. Like people around me are like, Is that gonna make you slip? Is that gonna make you slip? It's like, no, it's not gonna make me slip because I don't wanna do that anymore. What makes me slip is like want to slip is like when I see how much fun you and Shane have and you're like, oh, I even wrote a joke where I was like, one of the worst things about quitting drinking is missing your cool friends because your cool <laughs> friends don't want to text you back. They're like, this guy remembers everything. And you're like, fuck, I don't, but I forget I smoke weed. I Man, we were talking about Dane killing. I, and, and that's something that, dude, I saw him, a lot of people, you know, he rose and then a lot of people turned on him and a lot of people were like, yo, fuck this. But he did the Patrice, he did the first Patrice benefit. 
And I'll admit, I was a little cunty about it. Yeah. I was like, Dane Cook, I'm here to see Bobby. I'm here to see Big J. You know, I was like yeah. really being a turd about it. And he went on stage and fucking got me. He like got me. He got me like three times where I was like, oh, that's a great joke. Yeah. And I was like, I forgot. You forgot this guy was the guy. Oh, fucking without a doubt. Yeah. He like was. he was the guy giving Bill Burr guest sets at Madison Square Garden, being like, yeah, go up. Like, yeah. you know what I mean? He was the guy. It's funny that like, that like young comics that I know would look at Dane and be like, yeah, fuck that guy. Yeah. You know, like, cause I only knew the Dane. Look, there was like Dane. I, I, I say this with all love, but Dane was a complicated guy at that time, trying to yeah. navigate being the most successful comedian. But in the also, world. here's the thing: old school famous. You're famous now by every means. I mean, fucking, we're doing Red Rocks. You yeah. sold out Red Rocks three times in a row. You're fucking famous. But that was like '90s famous, that was, where it was like you. He charted on Billboard. You know what I mean? Like, there's like a there's like a unit of measurement of how fucking famous he was like a leading man in movies with like hot five like five leading man movies. hot jessica alba jessica simpson like you're putting it together and you're like this guy fucking did it if you were to look that on paper and go like would you these are the journey like total recall yeah which dream would you want to have you'd be like fucking that one that one rules just being super fucking famous and murdering every night and then going on and doing stuff he was he was it was i would watch people go up on stage and and take chances and fail and then you'd watch dane go on stage take chances and destroy yeah he did this thing at the boston comedy club i'll never remember this i remember laughing so hard uh Chappelle had gone up and kind of stumbled and you know figure like figuring yeah. stuff out dane went up and there was this little hole in the ceiling and dane was like wonder what's up there and it's the first thing he got up he goes have you guys been looking at that i wonder what's up there and he went up and put his hand up there and mimed not mimed but acted out that something had a hold of his hand yeah and he i don't know if he was holding on to something yeah but it looked like something had his hand yeah and he started trying to do material going hold on i can get through this That's it so was funny. so funny and i was like he was he was so in a fucking zone yeah do you know who everyone stole from him i did uh the blue whale comedy festival in tulsa and I was doing Saturday night, and Rory Scovel was doing Friday night. Uh, another fucking monster. And I went and watched Rory Scovel, and I was like, I don't want to do comedy anymore. He had this bit where he, and I, I hope he's not putting this on a special. I don't want to fuck his shit up. But it was just the, the whole premise was, how do you start a gangbang? And he was like, oh, they're kissing? Guys, they're kissing they're kissing and he like did like one of those things where he went around hey guys they're kissing i think we're gonna start and he like opened the curtain it was almost like a little ish like that todd glass ish like oh my god i would never have the balls to try this and this is so funny and rory oh. scovel and i just sat there watching it with run on and we like and uh and dina hashem and i was like i i don't think i want to do con like that I'm telling you right now, the next night I sucked because the whole entire time, it's like we were talking about when when you were like with Ian Bag or I was talking about Shane. You're like, you should have seen that. Uh, I was I was taking a I was doing a Showtime. Uh, I was hosting a show for Showtime that ended up being it was a, it was a weird thing. I, I, it's hard to explain, but it was a showcase for comics. Yeah, and I was the interstitials. I yeah. was, also did stand up, but I was the interstitials. So I was taking a train from London to uh, Amsterdam. I I I employ implore everyone to go find this clip. Yeah, and it's Todd Glass and Rory Scovel doing reenacting the Red Fox. Dun, 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 dun. Yeah, Sanford and Sons. Sanford and Sons. No, wait, but you know the story, right? About him in Vegas. Yeah, we go. Oh fuck this! And I ain't he, doing no comedy for <laughs> no ten people. Yeah, and then he, and then he starts walking. The band goes dun dun dun. dun, dun. dun. Yeah, and that's so one they, of my favorite stories. They had the music. That's dun, great. Dun, dun, and they were doing impressions of them, Jerry Seinfeld. So it was, funny. but it was so inspired. That's and so I was funny. on a fucking train, and I was crying, laughing. Todd Glass is one of the most Todd Glass is one of the most unique best shows I've ever seen in my life. Oh. It was at the old comics. 
in in Soho. In Soho. Todd Glass was headlining. It was Thursday. It was, they did like a typical Thursday through Saturday room. The room was half full. Anthony Jeselnik was sitting there watching. He was re- when Jeselnik was writing on Fallon. And Todd Glass came out and did one of the best shows I've ever seen. And he kept doing stuff where he would go backstage. And at the end of the show, he was like, all right, good night. And he had a wireless mic. And he walked back there. He goes, I mean, are we going to promote this thing? This thing's half fucking full. Anthony Jeselnik's out there. He's judging me. And he like came back out. You guys, you guys were unbelievable. Yeah. You were unbelievable. He walked back out. What the fuck? I mean, did they seem stupid? They felt stupid. He was brilliant. I will... I would go out of my way to see Todd Glass or Rory Scovel. And that's very rare with comedy. Oh. Because you're like, you see so much of it that you're like, I'm good. But like, Todd Glass with the full band, unbelievable. Todd Glass. I can't pet my dog without thinking of Todd Glass. He goes, you know those people? They're like, oh, those dogs? Oh, they're licking you just because of the salt. He goes, okay, all right. <laughs> Some of us want to enjoy it. Just that kind of stuff. He, the best is to get in a, get into a text just to text with him he sends i don't know if i still have it on this phone but his texts are out of nowhere and so fucking funny that's yeah he's a guy like especially moving to new york when i did in 07 i got to see like young rory scovel and like uh kumail and then like norman and sam were also coming up so there's all these people like list it's just all these people writing jokes where you're like I fucking suck. I suck so bad. Oh, I think that all the time about myself. Hang on. Yeah, but I remember moving there from Tucson being like, oh, fuck, I got to restart everything. He, hold on, let me see if I can, I'm, I'm texting him to see if I can get some of his texts. What, sent back to you? No, hold on. Oh, you're seeing that they pop up? Hang on, no, hang on one second. The Todd Glass I'm out of texts, guesses. I guess. Todd Glass texts are the fucking best fucking texts you'll ever get uh if you don't go over to my answer me i'm gonna go over to your house and if your wife's into it i'm gonna tap that shit like there's no tomorrow <laughs> wait my bad i meant to send that to my sister <laughs> <laughs> that's so fun yeah. he's because <laughs> you haven't replied to me i, I hate you you have to reply if you don't send it to me right back Right back now. I hope the next time you're in New York, there's another 9 11. That's very funny. Oh, God. Sorry, that was for my sister, too. <laughs> yeah, that's, man, I'm jealous of that. I'm jealous of people that get texts from Todd Glass, and I'm jealous of people that knew Norm McDonald. Oh, I that's do, the one I where do I'm that. Like, I do that. I, I said, that's the one where I'm always like, like the one, there's been a bunch of times where Shane has told me like real cool shit that legends have told him, but the Norm McDonald one, I'm like, that's the coolest Let shit. Let me see if I got my Norm text. My Norm text. Because Norm was, uh, the older and older I get, I think the more and more I realize that Norm was number one. Oh, without a doubt. Norm. Funny wise. By the way, this I got a new McDonald that is huge. Norm McDonald texted me. I don't have it on this phone. I got a new phone number. So Norm McDonald texted me. I'll take one more hit. And he said, um, I'm not giving you the sniffles, dude. He said to me, what did he say? We were talking. Oh, his, everything about him was a bit. Everything about everything he did was a bit. It was always for the bit. Yeah. Like it was never not for the bit. He got in trouble and I, te- I sent out a tweet just so everyone's clear. I'm team norm. I'll always be team norm or something. He's the greatest he's we ever had. I don't know what I said. Yeah. And then he DM'd me and he said, Hey, I, you know, I I hope you never have to go through what I'm going through. But if you do, I hope you get to feel the way I feel reading your text. It's nice to know that people respect me and that people love me. I don't feel that way right now. Yeah. And it means a lot. Thank you, Bert. And then I wrote back, Norm, you're the best always. And then he was like, and then he was like, do we know each other? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's the one too many where you stay yeah. one too long. Yeah. Where you're like, huh? And, and, then, like, and then for my special, I was going to do, I was going to do, don't edit this out, Halston. I was going to do a, a call and sick to work show. I used to do these call and sick to work Yeah, shows. I remember those. Yeah. And I said to, I said, I had Norm, I had Spade, I had everyone. And then the pandemic hit. Yeah. So staying home, home orders and my special airs and no one's going outside, which ended up being better for me. And uh, Norm texted me and he goes, Hey, what time are we doing this? That's this so is weird. in the morning. And I go, Norm, it's stay at home orders. And he goes, For who? Yeah. And I was like, for all of us. He's like, I'm at the store. No one's here. And I was like, so for real? And then he never replied. To That's me. great. 
That's great. Yeah, he was always a guy, like, um, he was a guy when I was a kid, figuring him out was, like, rewarding as a fan of comedy. Oh, yeah. When I was young and I'd watch him on SNL, I'd be like, well, they're not laughing. And then I started listening oh. to his jokes, and I was like, this guy's the best. Dude, when, his, when he and said- And dirty work Charles, changed my life. Did you see what he said about Charles, Charles Woodson on the ESPYs? Yeah, they won't ever let a comedian host because of him. Because That's the funniest joke. His, I think- the president of ESPN, whoever it was, was friends with OJ. And so they were like, hey, the one note we got was no OJ jokes. And he's like, yeah. And then at the end of the monologue, he goes, Charles Woodson's here, the uh, the first defensive player to win the Heisman Award. Congratulations, Charles. No one can take that away from you, you know, unless you murder your wife and a waiter. <laughs> and then Ken Griffey Jr., it goes to him and he goes, no. And everyone's like, oh, it's the best. Sean O'Connor, who's fucking hilarious. Uh, like got real close with Norm and he had all these Norm stories that he was tweeting out when Norm died and I was like that really always you find like little things on the road that make you feel better like yeah. a warm blanket and you just like read those stories and you're like oh fuck yeah dude he's his his podcast is fucking to this day yeah he's so funny when he had Tim Allen on someone just started circulating a clip and he's like yeah, how many uh, how many ounces of cocaine they catch you with? And he's like, oh, Jesus Christ, Norm. <laughs> and he's like, yeah, he did some real time, huh? He goes, I forget in the clip, but he goes, Candyman? Isn't that right? Is that what they'd say? They go, hey, Candyman. <laughs> and he goes saying that, and he's like, all right, all right, Norm. Dude, it's so goddamn funny. I came off one time, and he was I was bringing <sighs> him up, and I go, ladies and gentlemen, Norm MacDonald, Norm MacDonald. And I could see him in the shadow of the curtain. I go, Norm MacDonald. And I walk back and he's laughing a laugh. I can't tell if it was at me or with me. Yeah. And he was going, they shirts off the shirt. Like he's just laughing. <laughs> yeah. You're doing it with your shirt off. And he walked on stage and he just looked at me so confused. That's so fun. Dude. Dude that's the one thing I, I, I regret is that Norm MacDonald wasn't in New York a lot. You know, he never was like hanging out at the cellar. Or any of the clubs. You just only see him. He was hear, here. You ever hear his George Burns story? No. Uh, this but, is my, you might want to take one more. Hit of that yeah, joint. let's go. Dude. He, uh, still, let's still, let's by go. the way, this fucking, this joint is the shit, Joey. We should call Joey real quick and just thank him. It is very good. He, uh, oh, fuck my eyes. I'm going to start slapping my lips. How did George Burns do that? He his mouth thing. He lived till he was 70. He lived until he was 100, me. dude. Did he really? Oh, yeah, George Burns. What the fuck did I just say? <laughs> <laughs> You're like, yeah, he died at 48, tragically. That's me not, telling, me not paying attention to the story I'm telling. That's so funny. You know, George Burns died in a car accident, 23 years old. <laughs> <laughs> Take it too fast. Can I, uh, hold on, I'm FaceTiming Joey real quick to let him know how much we love laughing gas. <laughs> I love it so much. He is, <laughs> and it, you know, only Joey would make a joint that fucking big. It's, it's got to be an eighth of weed. It's very big. Dude. All right, no FaceTime from Joey. My big beef curtains can't handle it. He, um, so, so <sighs> Norm McDonald writes a script, and they're like, and his agent's like, this is perfect for George Burns. And Norm's like, George Burns? Isn't he like 100? <laughs> and they go, yeah, but he's like completely there. He's like, what? He's like, he's like, completely like he's 100 percent there it's not he's no senility and he goes really and he goes yeah norm what you should do is fly out to la he goes every day he goes to lunch at his country club with a bunch of comedians names them all and norm's like oh my god i'm fans of all of them yeah, yeah so he goes go out there and pitch him the script like pitch it to him just he's not gonna read it but pitch it to him i think he'll get it and he's like yeah and they're like and if he says yes you're making a movie with George Burns. And Norm's like, oh, wow. So he flies out to L.A. And he goes out to the country club. And all these all these greats, just, they're waiting for George Burns. And Norm's sitting at the table. And they're like, oh, you're the kid pitching to George, huh? And they're like, yeah. And he's like, oh, good, good, good. I hope you liked your script, kid. Yeah. And they're like, we'll give you some life. And Norm's like, yeah, sure. So George Burns sits down. And Norm starts pitching his script. And George Burns is like laughing hysterically and loving it. And Norm's like, I got it. But everyone at the table is just like shaking their head. And he's like, oh, I wonder what he's saying. And he looks over and George's like, I like it, kid. And he looks at George Burns and he's buttering his hands. <laughs> he's just buttering his hands. He's not here at all. That's so funny. 
Oh my god! He told that. So oh. I used to like. I, I'm good friends with Cowhead, Mike Calta. Yeah. I used to call into Calta when good comics were doing radio to hear them do radio because you couldn't like back then. You couldn't. Yeah, you didn't have it online. You couldn't hear it. Yeah, you'd be put on the on the hold on the request. So line. like uh, Geraldo Burr, yeah. uh, and and Norm and and other ones, but Norm was the one. That I called and I heard him tell that story. So then, uh, and then I, I tell, I, I, when I see him, I go, can you tell me your George Burns story? And he tells it to me better than when I heard it on the radio. And I just was like, this is, that's like my favorite story. Yeah. That's fucking perfect. Yeah. And he was like, buttering his hand is, uh, yeah. God damn, dude. He was a guy where he, the only time I ever met him, Caroline's used to do like a March Madness. Like yeah. 64 comics. I might light another cigar. Is that okay? What time? Yeah. What's your heart out? I'm fine. Okay. I'm hanging. I might light another cigar. This That cigar was so enjoyable. Yeah, dude. I might switch over to weed for a while. Just smoking weed? Yeah. It's pretty fun. Well, I, I, I'm- You eat like shit, but it's fun. I'm on keto- I'm in ketosis. I don't even know what that is. It's just protein. That's what my dad died of. Ketosis. <laughs> <laughs> he was taken. Uh, he was I'm, taken by eating clean. So I'm I'm in ketosis. So the reason I'm not drinking is because not. I mean, well, I mean, I'd like to be healthier, and I think that gets me healthier. But I can't lose weight with alcohol in my system. It just not isn't no, working. It's, and so I have to quit to lose weight. I, I said I won't drink until I'm 240. Um, and and you know I'm really bothered how many people aren't mentioning that I've lost weight. Like I like because you look good. I, well, thank you. Everyone mentioned how bad I looked. Like yeah. everyone, uh, my oh, daughters, during... my sister. Oh, really? My sister. I. She said last time I was with you, I wanted to stick a needle in your neck and just deflate you. I mean, there was a moment where you were sitting there. By the way, shoulders looking right now. No, I'm on tour. Oh, dude, your shoulders were on, and then you turned around, and Jay and I were like, "Ah, oh, dude, <laughs> god damn it!" <laughs> like you just moved it away. Where we're like. But I showed up today and I was like, you look rested as shit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I'm really, I'm really, um, I don't know. I'm sure I've, I don't know if I've talked about this or not. But I'll, so I was not a, I was not showing the world how I felt about myself. That is the one thing that bothered me is like, is like, uh, I just felt like, I really like Tom would say stuff about to me and about me online and and it would be the things that would go most viral. Like Bert got a kidney transplant and then everyone was Googling kidney kidney transplant. Like everyone believed it. And I was like, hold on, do I really look like I, and then Tom's like, yeah. And he would say it, but I would get angry. I'd be like, fuck you. Go fuck yourself. You were fat. And then I, when I I was like, I, one day I, I woke up, I was 270 and I was like, I was like, dude, I was never supposed to be 270. And I thought, oh, yeah, of course, if you don't show the world that you respect yourself, how are they supposed to respect you? Yeah, I mean, I don't know. I got some sweet tits and a nice gut at 40 because I eat but like you're skinny, garbage. But you're skinny. I'm skinny fat, which is, that's a layer of hell. I hope you never know, Bert. Skinny fat? Where all the fat goes to your weird parts, not even the parts that make sense. Why, is my, why is my back melting? I never even had back muscles. Uh, it is, I think... For me, what it always looks like is when people, what it, what it looks like to me, people haven't slept. That's what makes me nervous. Where I'm like, you got to. I haven't, I hadn't slept. I know. I rode on a tour bus with you. I would yeah. wake up and I'd be like, are you, you're up. And you'd be like, what's up, dude? And I'd be like, this is fucking nuts. Oh, I, well, I prided myself on this like rally recovery yeah. system of like, dude, I'll go hard at night. I'll get up early. I'll work out. I'll get everything done. But the problem was. I wasn't, I was working out to put out fires. Yeah. Like I was just, I wasn't doing any, I was, I mean, I was getting stronger. I got ex, ex, the strongest I've ever been, but I I wasn't doing the recovery. I wasn't sleeping. Yeah. I wasn't, uh, I was eating like absolute garbage. Dude, I think I'm, I think everyone's ready for hibernating Bert. Grow your hair long, dude. Get the oh. beard fucking going. Get, get on weed, get into like yoga. So you get a little wiry, but a little well, bit of a I, gut. I, I was like, I was like, I, I, for real, I have so much marijuana today. And I was like, I'm going to get high with Dan. I was told you, I was telling Ari, I was like, I'm going to get high with Dan and just enjoy weed and not double it up with booze. Cause yeah. you don't drink. And so I was like, that'll be great. Cause there's other people like I got high with uh, these guys the other day. And then I was like, yeah, let's have a tequila. And then everyone's like, yeah, it's a great, it's a great double up. But that, then the night's out of control. Yeah. Well, you're going, I used to smoke weed when I drank to kind of hit the parachute 
that's always what slowed me down is if I got high later in the night, I'd be like, all right, I think I'm done drinking. Or eat an edible. Yeah, no, sir. I have to be at home. Mm-hmm. I've been compromised too many times out in public. I I only eat edibles. And ed- my move was, my moves, I mean, it'll still be. Wait, you would drink and take an edible? I would drink. And then when I was done drinking, I'd be like, I'd be like, okay, the, I'm chasing the booze right now. I'm just sitting up having another drink to have another drink. Yeah. I'd be like, eat an edible. We'll be, we'll be gone <sighs> in 45 minutes. And I would wake up the next day and I could not turn it over. I'd be like this. You're coming out the mud, dude. Yeah, I think that I think all the time. Uh, a couple of nights ago, I couldn't sleep. Like I was waking up at, a couple of nights in a row. I woke up at like four a.m. and it was just up. And then I just walked into the uh, the office and I had edibles. They're ten milligrams. Just fucking ate two of them and it was like later. And then eleven thirty in the morning, I was like, "Oh, hey, there I am." Because <laughs> I just took it went right right to sleep. It's drinking with edibles. I would have never ran that risk because oh. I've only. When I was drinking, I'd only had negative experiences with edibles. Oh, yeah? It took me until I quit drinking to start having fun with it. Yeah, because I would, I was like at that, the first time I ever ate weed, I was at the University of Arizona, and we were freshmen, dead broke. My buddy was selling reg. He was just selling fucking swag. Yeah. We de-seeded it, two ounces, put it in a pan of brownies. My friend- like Two ounces? Yeah, like, but dirt weed. Yeah. so we're like, oh, we didn't even know this is going to work. We cut it into four sections, and we each take it. So it's each having, what, like a and fucking it, a half ounce of weed yeah. and a brownie. And I ate it flying Tucson to Denver. I was going home. I was going home for Thanksgiving. My freshman year, going home for Thanksgiving. And I eat half the brownie, and there was a smoking lounge at the Tucson airport. So I start, I'm smoking a couple cigarettes. I'm like, I didn't do shit. <laughs> but then I'm like starting to get chatty. I'm like, hey, what do you do? <laughs> you know? And I'm smoking another cigarette. And I'm like, I'm starting to feel good. And I and then I get on the plane and I'm like, well, I'll eat the other half. <laughs> and I eat it and it was like oily. It was like 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 a puck. And I eat it and I'm like, hmm. dude, this is how long ago it was. It was 2002. I had a discman. I had a, a discman. Uh, and I'm listening to like Outcast or something. And I have my headphones on and the lady's like, excuse me, you have to turn off your discman. And I was like, all right I, I turned it off and i shut my eyes and then i was like <laughs> and we were landing in denver my eyes were bloodshot and i was so fucking high <laughs> that getting to my friend dennis's car was a legitimate problem like trying to get through dia i was like hey! i got in his car and this is like my buddy from high school i haven't seen he has a joint lights it up and i'm like oh yeah i'll take i took a hit and i started overheating and i had to like peel off dude i was wearing an adidas sweatshirt i remember i took it off and i was like i'm fucked up i'm good guys i'm fucked up i'm, I'm, fucked dude, up. I'm real fucking bad i taught everybody that i talked to that ate that brownie had a similar they were like that was nightmarish what did, what was that <laughs> but it was such shit weed boiled down that fucking and then that was when i was drinking <clears throat> so i was like i just stay away from edibles we did we we did a trip from tallahassee to key west and we had edibles, and we were in a forerunner, and we decided it would be a wise move to lay down all the seats and sit crisscross applesauce in the back seat. Kumbaya shit. And just, like, all sit around in, like, a group. Yeah. And so we did that. Unless someone hits the brakes. And, well, we, there was a point where we, no one knew anything about dosages. Yeah. And everyone had a somewhat panic attack, and it was like a bunch of guys scrambling in a sub that was going underwater because we were all on our hands and knees, oh, and it was so moving. Like, oh, moving. it was so fucking Are bad. You okay? Like, and the and the person driving is back when you know people drove like assholes. Yeah, he was fucking flying, and we're like, just go a little slower. Dude, being fucked up and being unpleasant in a in a in a ride. Oh my god, we got to Key West. We got to Key West, and we were like, so we kissed the ground. Yeah, you get we're out, like, get us out of here. I've been, uh, one of the worst times was I went down to visit Arizona my senior year. Me and my friends, we all drove down in my friend's Astro van. Oh. And it broke down in Tucson. And so some people fled. Some of us stayed until it was repaired. And then tried to drive it back to Denver. And it broke down again in Santa Fe. Like on the way up to Colorado. (laughs) I called my mom. She was working at an office. It was like six hours away. She was like, I'll come get you. She shows up, get you know, get her car, and she's like, "All right, Dan, you're driving back." She, she goes, "Take us to the local liquor store." 
She goes to the liquor store. She gets herself two bottles of wine and she buys my two friends that are my three friends that are with me a case and a half of beer and they all get fucked up as I'm driving back to Colorado. That was one of the most annoyed I've ever been in my life <laughs> where I'm like, shut the fuck up. <laughs> like, I was stone sober watching everyone just be like, yeah, back. and my mom's like telling embarrassing stories. He pisses himself. You know? and I'm like, Will you shut the fuck up, Trish. And dude, it was horrible. It was horrible. Oh my God. And I remember my friends were like, shut up, dude, pull over. We're going to smoke a cigarette. Oh, I hated it. That was how I feel when I quit drinking at first. Really? Yeah. I'd just be like, it feels like that car ride where everyone's like, eh, what are you doing? Oh, I was at a dinner party last night and I was the only one not drinking. Oh. And everyone, it started with like a glass of white wine. Everyone was like, do you want a glass of white wine? I, di- I actually didn't, yeah. but I didn't, I couldn't because I wanted to stay in ketosis. Sure. And I had to let them know <laughs> that I'm, in, I'm keto or corn or whatever the fuck I am right yeah. now. You're about to and be carved so, up. So they, they made a keto dinner for me. They, All right. Yeah, it was really sweet of them. Yeah. But I will tell you, being sober at a dinner party is somewhat tedious at times. I've always, I've always said to people, it's like everyone else is scuba diving and you're snorkeling. Yeah, you're like, I can go down for a little bit. I'm not hanging out down there. With I you. was laughing at times. I was laughing, and then, and then, you know, little things like where if you're drinking, you don't notice. Like we were there for six hours, and it, as sober, six hours. You're like, you that's, feel a, six hours. that's a commit. Yeah, my you wife, my night. wife did not want to leave. You never want to leave. The hours you get back when you quit drinking, if you really drank, the hours you get back are 1 to 4 a.m. And you get them back in a way of like, oh, I get a lot more sleep. Yeah. I'm just going to oh, go to sleep. Dude, I slept. I slept, I slept great this morning today. I've been sleeping great lately. I, dude, like, I get excited for it. We're old men. That's what we talk about now. Yeah. We're like, dude, how good, you know how good a sleep I got? my recovery's through the roof these days we just we bought a new bed we moved from a queen size to a king size no game changer man. oh yeah i'm a flippy flopper oh we have a california king fuck you and, oh, and that flex. is that I is was, you know carson wentz back when he signed his big contract with the eagles i remember they put out a thing about this like extra he got like a super fucking large mattress like an extra California King, a fucking a Sacramento yeah. special. I don't know what the fuck he got, but it was something where you could do like, you could do rolls on it. And yeah. I was like, that is, that's the most baller shit. Well, the best bed I have is in my tour bus. Is it really? Without a doubt. Without a doubt, I just took And you can sleep on the road. Easy. I couldn't. Easy. I would feel the fucking tires hit oh, shit. Oh, no, see. I look, I look like a, too much like Cliff Burton. Cliff Burton. <laughs> Cliff, oh, shit. <laughs> From Metallica. Bring him up. I look like Cliff Burton. You do, dude. Bring up Cliff Burton from Metallica. I get nervous on fucking tour buses. No, I don't. I I I have no no. <laughs> 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 Fuck you, man. I ain't falling asleep on a tour bus. It scares the shit out of me. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> Probably not a bad way to go. Awesome. Rock and roll is fuck, dude. But it scares me. <laughs> But for me, it makes me scared. No, I sleep so good on that. I just took a nap today in that tour bus. Oh, we got. To, I did a podcast with my wife, and then I was, and then I went out front, got in the, my bunk or got in my bed, and naked, and I slept sitting up. Here's the beauty about losing weight: is you stop your sleep apnea goes away. Yeah, at two seventy, I was having it pretty bad. I would think I was. I wouldn't be shocked if I hit two eighty during that tour. There was, if I could be honest, please as a bunk mate. It was nerve wracking waking up and being like, oh my God, there's a grizzly bear passing. It was like, oh. it was, there was, was breathing. There's like snoring, you know, when your friends snore in a certain way, we're yeah. like, I want you to get that looked at. Yeah. So we should do sleepovers for that reason at our age, <laughs> just to diagnose apnea. <laughs> like, dude. dude, slumber party at your house. We're building a fort in the basement. Also, I would go see a sleep doctor. That seems like some, something Ari would put together. Yeah. A slumber party. Rather than an adult slumber party. Yeah. And then he would put my hand in warm water and I'd piss myself. Dude, there was nothing bad. That's honestly, that's my favorite thing about a tour bus is the slumber party feel. Yeah. Of everyone. Like, like my, like I loved when we had, we had just a crew bus. So it was all bunks. Yeah. And you'd be going to bed and people would open the curtain and be like, yeah, make a crack a joke or Rosebud was the best to sleep with. <laughs> like she was the best i would amend that bud you're being nope. videotaped <laughs> i'm not your lawyer but yeah. i'd walk that back if i were rosebud was the best bunk mate there you go <laughs> she was she i oh uh 
they I fucking I'll never forget I'll never figure out how this went down. It was my birthday, and I have a fear of balloons. And Rosebud filled my bunk, my bunk with balloons. That's great. And why, do you what? Ha, why are you afraid of balloons? It's not, I don't know. Is it the noise? It's the everything. It's the unpredictability of them. It's they like pop it. Any yeah, moment. they can pop at any moment. It's like an alcoholic dad. Yeah, it's like hey, yeah. everybody got in their fucking room. Holy shit, dude! Yeah, so like I just I just, and I the smell of them. I can smell them, and the smell creeps me out. Yeah, like everything about them is. You see, whenever I see people, like I saw someone. Uh, Eric Andre is a balloon guy, not a balloon guy, but like he doesn't have the fear of like <laughs> balloon enthusiast. He's he'll put a balloon in his mouth and like hold it there and talk to someone, and then doing like whippets. Yeah, and I'm just like I couldn't even do whippets like that. We had to do them out of the canister. <laughs> oh, like fucking the, the, your shaving cream or yeah. uh, whipped cream. And uh, never liked whippets. Oh, 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 were you a big whippet guy? I loved whippets. This fucking one of the most dangerous people I've ever met in my life was this drug dealer that my roommate knew in college. <laughs> Burnt your last piece of toast, avocado's gone bad, or is the hot sauce bottle empty? Try grocery delivery from DoorDash. You'll get everything you want delivered when you need it, right to your door. This is Leanne's go-to. I'm telling you right now, my family hasn't stepped step foot in a grocery store in probably since the pandemic. You've trusted DoorDash to deliver your restaurant's favorites, and now you can get grocery delivery that actually delivers too. With thousands of grocery stores to choose from, you'll find the best in your neighborhood and boost your local economy, 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 economy with each and every order. With easy substitutions right in the app and best-in-class customer support, DoorDash delivers groceries exactly how you want it. I am telling you right now, DoorDash has been delivering avocados to our house forever we eat avocados like crazy the girls go through an avocado a day and we bring i'm telling you right now i big shout out to doordash get 50 for my daughters should have never learned about doordash get 50 percent off your first doordash order up to a 20 dollar value when you use code BERT at checkout. Limited time offer, terms apply. That's 50% off up to $20, no minimum subs total, and zero delivery fees on your first order when you download the DoorDash app in the App Store and enter code BERT. Don't forget, that's code BERT for 50% off your first order with DoorDash. One of the most dangerous people I've ever met in my life was this drug dealer that my roommate knew in college. And one time I like took a ride with him because I was just looking for free weed whenever I could get it. And he's like, yeah, we're going to fucking get a ride with this guy. And he had uh, one of those whipped cream machines. Yeah. And he had a box of the fucking things. And he was driving and he would just like almost oh, like an inhaler. Wow. Like we were joking around about it, but he would hit that. And he looked like Napoleon Dynamite. And he was one of the most dangerous people I've ever met. My we life. had the best. We had the best drug dealer in he would just hit that and you'd be like i don't i was in the back seat like ha, oh, cool man you've done a lot of those <laughs> <laughs> you're like trying you know when you're nervous but you're trying to act cool it's going like, left going left oh wow man you wow that's so cool <laughs> hey can we not go on the highway i just have a thing about highways oh, fuck oh well, this is a tall you bridge. must be spinning huh <laughs> dude I was, I was such a pussy to be around those guys in high school i had a friend who i cannot name his name and we were at a we were at the stoplight. So you go uh, University of Tampa's here, and then you go over this bridge, and there's a stoplight where you have to take a left on like I think Adams, because it's one way facing you. It's all one way facing. <laughs> What's you, really right? fun about this is like people who in Tampa can do drive-alongs. Yeah, <laughs> like starting the Wizard of Oz. They go all right, go where Bert says. Start the story. The little bridge next to the University of Tampa. Like, oh. and so you go into downtown. <laughs> you can take a right or a left, right? Yeah. It's a two-way street there, but straight ahead's one way. And we were doing whippets, and he hit a whippet, and he closed his eyes, and he rolled over. He was driving. We were, but we were at a stoplight. Yeah. And it's a red light, and he looks at me, smiles, and his foot comes off the gas, and we just roll through the stoplight, and we roll down the one-way street, and we're both so fucking high. And I was like, turn left, <laughs> turn left. <laughs> And then we were we got sober. You w we came out of it getting onto the fucking interstate. But those were like these fucking days when you're a child, and you think there's no repercussions for your actions. Yeah. That's if I heard that my daughter was either drinking, smoking weed, or doing whippets in her car, I would fucking 
murder her. The amount of clam bakes I did with my friends in my car, if I found out, if I had a kid that was doing that, I'd oh be like, you God. irresponsible fuck. And in my mind, I was like, this is fine. I'm not bad. I'm just getting fucking super high. Our thing was all about getting caught. It wasn't about, it wasn't about doing a right or wrong thing. It was about getting caught. That was the fucked up thing is like, we would be like, they'll never know that these are what whippets are like in our yeah. head. Yeah. And we're like, if we get pulled over, we're, they will be sober by the time. Oh, because they won't be able to prosecute. Yeah. They don't, it's that not was, drinking. Yeah. yeah. Like we didn't, we didn't, no one really brought weed anywhere with them. Cause we were like, we don't want to get caught with weed. You get in trouble. See what's for me. It was like, weed was a big deal. It was like, don't, that you're going to get really fucking deal get caught smoking weed you're in trouble we just put bounty sheets on us the freshener before when we get high at school when we come back in and you'd be like dude i remember being in physics and uh me and my friend byron got high at my house we had an open campus so you could like leave and come back in high school yeah it was awesome uh and i remember we left and we went to my house my mom's at work and so we got high at my house and came back and there was this russian kid i swear to god named boris just in, and he'd always wear this Red Wings jersey. It's like stereotypical, but he smoked a lot of. He smoked weed and couldn't hide it in public. <laughs> and we we're in physics, and we were doing something with like sound waves. And he just goes, ew, ew, ew. and me and my friend across the room were like, fuck, because we were so high. I remember being like, this is one of the hardest I've ever laughed, and I can't explain why. Oh. It's just Boris making that noise. Me and my friend Byron lost it lost it in fifth period physics there's i want i've only God, been that was one of the most enjoyable laughs i've ever had in my life i i miss the classroom structure it's authoritative like because it's it it is set up for comedy yeah it is set up for comedy because of the energy that you have to be there you are the you are the uh dare i say minority or the oppressed people yeah and the teacher is the authoritarian so the so the idea that you're taking shots at the authoritarian, yeah, or the fact that yeah, you're, you're punching hide, up, you're punching up, yeah, or, it's the perfect comedy scenario. Do you remember the first time a student went after a student on a joke, and you're like, whoa, 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 <laughs> guys, 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 we're making fart noises, we're making yeah. fun of this fucking schmuck. What, what are you guys turning on the gun on each other? Tyre, the, to this day, Ty, this is a little hacky. I mean, I'm sure people have heard this, but I had not when I was 16. Yeah. We were in religion class, and Mr. said to me, he's a brother. He was turning into a, a brother. He's a priest. Yeah. So he had the blue shirt on with the thing, light blue. And he was like. He's just bottom rockers. He wasn't in the full gang. No, yet. he wasn't in the full gang. He had. <laughs> he was living in the in the in the. He wasn't fully patched. He was not. Yeah, he wasn't jumped in yet. <laughs> yeah, and no, so like, we're gonna give you a holy ass whooping. <laughs> And so, meet us in the showers at three. <laughs> yeah. Oh, we're going to fuck you in. <laughs> There's only one way in, and you know which way it's in. He, he, I sat in the front row, Ty sat behind me, and he goes, Mr. Kreischer, uh, Jesus called uh, Peter to, the, to his cross before he died, and he said one thing to Peter. What did he say to Peter, Mr. Kreischer, from the cross? What did Jesus say to Peter, Mr. Kreischer? Mr. Christ, are you listening? And I did not have the answer, and I was frozen. And Ty Rodriguez leans up behind me, and he goes, "I can see your house from here." <laughs> and I laughed so That's hard. Very funny. I laughed so fucking hard. Yeah. And I and I could not, I could not keep it together. And he sent me to the office. Yeah. And I and it was worth it. Going down for a laugh like that absolutely what did he say to you mr kreiser what did he just say to you i go nothing he goes then you'll be going to talk to uh fucking what's his name i got to his office and he's like what the fuck are you doing here i said mr sent me and he goes why i said ty rodriguez told a joke he goes what was the joke i said jesus called peter to the cross and he said some you know what do i what what did he say to peter ty said i can see your house from here and mr laughed he likes the cigarette he goes, that's fucking good <laughs> yeah. he's like all right go back you're fine let and teachers I, yeah. smoke again yeah he smoked a lot he would let teachers smoke if they're gonna be in harm's way yeah with the school shootings they're going let them be ripping a pack of camels oh we had our coaches go. yeah i don't know here we go uh <laughs> carry the x <laughs> yeah. <I would> respect <laughs> teachers get paid like shit you might as well let them smoke cigarettes he said the one time one time oh fuck i wish i remember this this kid peter alfonso 
said first baseman for the no, <laughs> we were we had we had in school suspension so we were sitting in the yeah, office in school was like that was like jail versus like out of school was like prison yeah and you just ran errands for the fucking like ours was like you sat in a room at the like they kept you like a zoo animal oh we would walk by and you'd be like oh and be like, ah. <laughs> as you walk by you drew each kid's like ah i got put away for <laughs> truancy yeah <laughs> yeah get back get back you I heathen got, i got out of school suspension one time and they called i went so I did go, I, but i forget what i did i didn't do anything bad i think i was just part of it i was playing with my dick okay i was i had my hand in my pants and i was playing with my dick just not just but we were watching a movie in history class and i was just had my hand we were we were laying me in this three dudes nick nick DePaulo, joe DePaulo. He's like, yeah i got my fucking hand here yeah. you know what i fucking don't you can't understand you fucking looking at my dick and so i'm, that's not a, I'm that's itching a bad my DePaulo. dick and i was great friends with her entire family I said bert can you please get your hand out of your pants and i lean over i go well we know what she's been looking at and she went what did you say and I was like, and I was friends with her. And I was like, well, I was making a joke. She goes, I don't give a fuck. Go to the office. And I go, Damn. I was like, and I knew her sisters. I knew her really well. And, <laughs> I, I and she was the, your teacher? Yeah, she's my teacher. And she, and, I, and I just made a joke. And then I go to the office and and they're like, yo, you're going to get suspended for that. And I was like, fuck. So coach called my dad and he got him on speaker and he goes, uh, Al, I'm sending, uh, I'm sending Bert home. He's going to be suspended for the rest of the day today tomorrow and friday and uh and he can come back monday and then my dad goes the fuck you are he goes that's gonna be a goddamn vacation for him yeah, he goes you're it. gonna send him home no 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 keep him there make him do shit there yeah and i was like dad what the fuck are you doing yeah he's like all right go out Damn. to the parking lot and pick up nails oh, but there is that moment where like you do see that daylight you're like i'll hang out at home oh yeah work out get some time jerk off 10 times god damn it there was Dude, no the better. amount of free time to jerk off when you're a teenager you were like oh i i have free time i'm gonna jerk off <laughs> i wish i i wish i had the same passion about jerking off that i did then no way man i was like a i was like a zoo chimp oh i was fucking insane my mom worked so i'd be like and then she had boyfriends that would live with us i'd be like fucking joe's here or else i'd jerk off <laughs> If was, Joe wasn't in the house. There was no better feeling than your parents leaving you to the house by yourself. And you knew you're like, you could, goodbye, goodbye, uh, goodbye. Oh my the car God. would pull at the Go end of the road. Tape. You'd be like, all right, we're jerking off. The the feeling of a VHS vibrating oh. in your hand. And you and if it was if you were smart, you had a VHS that was perfectly timed right. to you, when to when uh re, when uh the Revenge of the Nerds guys ran into the shower or Rodney Dangerfield opened dude. the shower when he goes, Hey, the body on you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Dude, I remember my friend Joel got a fake ID. He took his brother's birth certificate and and like a social security card and got a, an identification card from the state of Colorado that made, we were 16, that made him 18. Because we were trying to get booze. We were trying to get cigarettes. Yeah. Because we all smoked. And I was like, well, if you can get cigarettes, you can get porn. And he was like, okay i'll buy you porn and there was this place by my house called newsland and newsland had magazines back in the day where like magazine stores existed yeah where Pee Wee herman jerked off is that where it was it was was like it it was no it was a movie theater but it was those movie theaters were a part of like a bookstore it was a part of a bookstore but it was this was like exclusively newspapers magazines all this shit but they had a porn section like vhs porn section that was like adults only had like the fucking wild west doors yeah. or whatever oh yeah <laughs> yeah wow and this i forgot is, about that yeah spelunking for porn dude dropping in the cave and see what you could get you had to casually be like oh you had to get it. dude it was dangerous you had to get in there and be like oh, it was like a heist oh your yeah. heart your heart would be racing oh my god and you'd be like grab this one and they're like you sure you want that one you're like oh there's too many dudes in this one wrong one <laughs> yeah so i remember being like joel was 18 and we'd all like we'd all be scattered you know i would go down in the cave first i'd drop in go around you know try to find like oh big oh. titties uh, and then i'd be like all right here's what you do i'd go out and i'd get him and i go go in go to your left go to your left again i left the movie out it's the movie show in the face and he'd be like okay <laughs> and he would go but you'd go get it and buy it and you'd get like porn for it yeah. then you'd get porn and we'd get in his car and like divvy it up and be like oh we got it and then there'd be this awkward like drive home where he'd be like so what do you guys want to do and you're like 
take me home. <laughs> You're like, you just bought what I want to do. I have this, I, I don't know, maybe watch Splat on my rack too. Splat on my rack. <laughs> I have a TV slash VCR in my bedroom. That was, that took my jerking off to like an, an insane level. Oh. I got a TV with a VCR in it when I was like 16 and I was like, oh, well, there we go. There goes any outside time. My jerking off uh, got to a, a fevered pitch when I moved to New York because I, I I never had time to jerk off. I never had, v- you could never find porn. I never had any in porn. In Florida? I find that hard to believe. Tampa yeah. nonetheless. I never had a porn. I never owned a porn pornographic video until I moved to New York. And really? I, and I moved to New York. I was living across from the comedy cellar and I was I got up off the off the ACE yeah. over on West Fourth. Yeah. And still I, there. And there was still there was running a, to this day. There was a porn st- store right to the oh, right. Oh, there's a lot of porn stuff. That's and, like that side of the of Sixth Avenue. Yeah. Where you're like, oh cool, I'll go buy a, I'll go buy a dick hammock right here. Oh. And a ball gag and porn. We we went I went in by myself heart racing <laughs> racing i've never been into one of these stores in my entire life you're like I, what's gonna happen in here are you guys gonna touch my wiener <laughs> and the mat the matter of not giving a fuck the people behind the counter have they're like yeah desensitized yeah, and you're like hi i'm looking for like a good video yeah and i was like and and the guy's <laughs> like eh, videos are all over and i was like okay so can you recommend one and he just looked at me he goes yeah and he grabbed two videos and he goes, one of these. And I'll take, I'll take both of them. That's weird that they're like um, boner sommeliers. Oh. We're like, what? Can you give me uh, something that's going to make me want to rip my pants off? He goes, ooh, I've got something. This is a good year. This is the 1986. Girls, the one girl, the one, the opening scene, two girls are naked on a couch. I'll never forget this. My heart dropped. It, it doesn't drop much watching porn anymore. Yeah. Like where you go, ooh, I've never seen that. What are you, what are you guys going to do? <laughs> yeah. Where's cool. your guys' clothes? Jeez, you guys. Yeah. Oh, are you guys going to get to know each other a little oh, bit? You guys, you guys look all right. You look like you're hungry. The girls were sitting ass to ass on a couch, and they and one girl had a pantyhose on, and the girl ripped the toes open of the pantyhose, started sucking her toes, and then she put her foot in the girl's pussy. And I went, uh, uh, what is this? I've uh, never, I didn't know you know you could do that. Uh, feet? <laughs> In the vagina? Yeah. And I was like, uh, oh, dude, big toe. Big, big toe. toe, big toe. She's done it before. Yeah. She's this isn't her no, first time. Oh fuck. This big toe. You work up to big toe. Oh, I I <coughs> I don't think I got past that one scene for fucking dude. years. And then I moved to LA and I got a job on the X show. And one of the dude, Chris Colhane, had a job reviewing pornography. What do you like watch it? He would watch like it. Like Siskel and Ebert? And he'd review it. And he'd review. And so, what was it? What was his scale? Was he like, I gave this three wax. I, 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 I think came. Probably. I came again, and I wanted to keep coming. I think so. She took it in that asshole like a real champion. He was the first person to tell me that porn stars would fuck anyone. Like he, you know, you can just go down there and get in the mud with them. Yeah, <laughs> he, like he, he goes, all you got to do is get tested. If you're tested, you can just show them your test. They'll fuck you. And I was like, for real? And he said one time like she's like, out at dinner and you show her it and she's like all right he was like we were, I sitting, guess I'll pause this. we were sitting at lunch and he was telling me about bringing a girl back to the studio back to the offices and having sex with her a porn star and i said i don't even know who she is he goes i have a video i've shot some of her videos and he goes do you want i can just drop some off in your green room and i was like mm-hmm. and he dropped off a like uh like see those plastic tubs but imagine the big big ones that you put under a bus yeah like you were studying film for a football season fucking yes she goes all the bottom tapes are their uh downhill sweep you got play action up here you're gonna study all the formations right there i this is her getting pegged this is her pegging <laughs> you got them all right here just run this tape buddy <clears throat> there was a porn star that came to it. we used to have porn stars come all the time so we had a porn star one time uh and she said to me, hey, uh, I did the interview. And she goes, hey, you're really cool. And I was like, oh, thanks. She goes, uh, we should hang out sometime. I was like, okay. And in my head, I was like, I'll never hang out with a porn star because I, like, I had fears of diseases or something. And she was like, she was like, uh, 
you should come down. I'm, I'm working this weekend. We should hang out. And I was like, okay. She goes, come to the set. Have you ever been to a porn set? I said, no. And she goes, come to the set. And I was like, okay. And then I said, my buddy Weecho is coming in town this weekend. Can I bring him? And she goes, yeah, yeah. And then Gary Valentine walked down the hallway with his brother, Kevin James. Yeah. And I said, uh, hey, guys, do you get, can, is it cool if they come? And then <sighs> she grabs me and gets real close. She goes, hey, I'm fucking another person. I'm not making a pie for them. That's funny. So don't invite anyone else. And I was yeah. like, oh, sorry. Oh, Scott, I, you're doing this very intimate thing. <laughs> yeah. That, uh, there was another one. Tori, did you go? No. Because I wonder if it's like being ringside. I would, like to, I would like to go to a porn shoot where you're like it's easier digestible on tv the the slapping yeah you're like oh oh i got hit with sweat i hear they smell really bad i can't smell so i would i'd be fine <laughs> really i got nothing dude the, the, one of my favorite lines is jimmy tatro in this tv show said uh Oh, don't worry, you'll have a lot of privacy i have no periphery vision <laughs> <laughs> yeah dude i can i think it's one of my great skills is that i can't smell i just they died out because I smoked cigarettes for so long. For real? Yeah. Gone. Um, I would like to go to, if you could go to a porn set, what porn star would you like to see work? I mean, we're going all time. You can do all time. And we're going all time. I'm going to pull some 90s classics. For real? Yeah, Ashlyn Gear. I don't even know her. Pull her up. And pull her up today. Come on. Ashlyn Gear. Yeah. I'm oh, I would have liked to have it. watched. I would have liked to have watched uh, franchise player Janet Jameson. Oh, I mean, Tara Patrick. Tara Patrick. We're you know going... Tara Patrick. You know you know how Tara Patrick got her but name. That's her. Yeah, she was in a couple regular. Th- yeah, dude. Last resort. What's up? Oh what my is god. This? What is this? Two thousand? What is this? Nineteen ninety nine? Are you trying to give me nineteen ninety nine boners? Do you uh, do you know how Tara Patrick got her name? I don't know, but I remember uh, the first on. time it's... I saw her. It was like the first time people heard Zeppelin. <laughs> I was like, "What is this?" <laughs> I stopped my friend from across the room. Shut up! <laughs> what is th- that? What is that? That's Tara, Tara Patrick. You're Tara like, Patrick is a bad I, motherfucker. I love her. Pull up Tara Patrick. So Tara Patrick, this is a cool story. She, you know how she got her name? Mm-mm. It's Carmen Electra's real name. Really? Yeah. That's fun. She picked Carmen Electra's real name to be her porn name. That Carmen Electra's like, son of a bitch. How fucking cool is that about? Carmen Electra's real name's Tara Patrick? Yeah. Oh. Tara Patrick. Let me see Tara Patrick. Shout out. God, she was fucking awesome. Yeah, dude. When I was like 17, so I I followed Joel's lead. And I got what they were called at the time novelty IDs. This is like the internet in 1998. Really? Because you we could get them at Kinko's. Yeah, so this one you could just get online. And it's like a prank ID. Wow, <laughs> this is a prank ID. And I got a fake ID from Connecticut. And I pushed it and said I was 21. And I sent a passport photo. And I got the ID. And then I started buying porn, brother. <laughs> oh. I would go to school, go to work. If I was coming home from work, I'd be like, in tips, because I was like a busboy. I was like, stop by, buy a couple of VHSs. It's like a, a light blue VHS or whatever. Dude, I would go to the bargain bins and get like three porns and be like, thanks for five bucks. <laughs> My mom would be like, I'm going to Randy's for the weekend. I'd be like, see you later. <laughs> Dude, it was wild. It was, and Jen, then I was the, buying, and then I started buying booze and uh, shit got cool. The, the, the when i saw jenna jameson for the first time have sex randy west up and comers I, no it was no it was uh shout out randy west i don't know i don't actually know it was, she was in a safari tent in this porn and sh- and i watched her and i went oh she's actually having sex with that guy like, that's she's hilarious fucking that guy. she's making love to and him. i was like this is this is why she gets the extra dollars or something there's something that you're like oh okay it looks like there aren't many great matches. It's a very Who funny thing. For? It's very funny to look up and see that. <laughs> Jenna Jameson, a safari tent. Google's like, ah, are you sure you want to do this? Jenna Jameson was paralyzed from the waist down for a while. She lives in Hawaii now. I, I follow her. Yeah, she was like it sucks uh, that I, not she was like the one that your friend, I was in, I was in like freshman, sophomore year where she when she blew up like eighth grade, freshman, sophomore year, and people would tell you about her yeah. the way they would talk about a band that they thought they discovered. Yeah. Where they'd be like, no, no, no. There's this porn star. And it was right around the time Pirates came out. Do you remember that movie Pirates? I think it was called Pirates. It was Vivid. Vivid did a oh, movie called oh, yeah, Pirates. Yeah, 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 it was I like know. a big budget porn. Yeah. That shit was like the big porn of my high school where we're like, dude, you got a copy of Pirates? This costs 60 bucks. 
It was Holy like insane. Shit. Vivid that at that time, I, I wonder like, you know, everything happened, everything has a fall uh, at, at some point. Yeah. Fucking Mark Norman's obsessed with the fall of comedy. Like he's obsessed. Like when's it gonna when's it Wait, gonna stop? Chicken Little? Yeah. He, he's like, yeah. Norman, has, Norman has a hardcore chicken little view on life. Really? I, in my opinion. Which he's is crazy. There like, it is, dude. Shout out pirates. It was, but you think vivid video must have thought. This is never going to change. Yeah. They used to do comedy shows. You know that? That's crazy. They did comedy shows. Savannah Sampson showed me her vagina one night. It's a picture of it, of me looking at Savannah Sampson's vagina on stage. Yeah. Savannah Sampson, me, Segura, and Nick Thune did one of the shows. And Savannah Sampson was having sex with, edit his name out. But And so we couldn't use the green room. And, uh, and then I brought her. She just came on stage during my set. And I was like, and I said something about her, my wife had just had a baby or something about vaginas. And she goes, oh, I have a baby and showed me a vagina. And I was like, oh, shit. And I was like, wow, have you ever seen one night in, in it's no, the, the porn with Rocco Sofredi's and Savannah Sampson? No. But he had a documentary recently that was out. Yeah, I watched that. On Netflix. He's got a great fucking body. About, he was like, but he talks like a guy that's great at fucking. He's like, where he's like, do you understand this? Curses, my penis. My penis. I, I can never be satisfied. The hunger of this penis. And then, meanwhile, no I'm reason, like, whenever I'm having sex, I'm like, this is weird. <laughs> Move your leg. <laughs> <laughs> this is, I don't know. Do I? <laughs> and then one time I put her head in the toilet, I, and they liked it. I understand. I come on you just so powerfully. Yeah, Ooh. it's you should. I would argue, and hilarious. I and I, Sugar and I talked about this because it's so intense savannah sampson is on stern she meets rocco sofredi's i hope this is the right story is this like a uh, a fight press conference where they go face to face before they fuck no she was like a stern. <laughs> like in the middle she was a, she stern's was... in the middle only in america <laughs> only in america can a stud from italy fuck this whore that this country has given us he she i think she worked at scores and she came in and she was she was like, I'd like to do porn. This is and like then, when John Cena wrestled Kurt Angle. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ruthless. Aggression. <laughs> and slapped him. You're like, oh, this young girl's gonna be somebody. And they but they and, really did set it up like that. And they set it up and they flew her to I think to Paris. And she had sex with Rocco Sofredi's International and another Waters. guy. See if you can find Rocco Sofredi's Savannah Sampson. And it is, and it is. <laughs> one of the most it sounds like a porn kimbo slice video where you're like you gotta see it. they're in the backyard you, and we remember and when the guy lost his eye yeah and you're like oh this is fucking real <laughs> yeah. that's that porn there's a point where if i i dare you as a man to not watch that porn and not swallow consistently just go, go. <laughs> <laughs> so you guys are uh, yeah yeah so sweet god so Savannah you guys samson and rocco don't go to images go to video Sweet Lord. It, he has another girl in there. And you can see the it's it's almost like Is she like the rodeo clown? She's she like she's gets like, the cock to attack her so Savannah can get a sip of water. I think no, 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 no. I think <laughs> she's there. She's <laughs> there to like it's almost like she's like her dive guide, going like, <laughs> We're going deeper. We're going deeper. She's and like, it's fine. Okay. He's gonna do it to I me. I need you to breathe out of your mouth. Yeah. And you're gonna gag right now. She but goes, don't I'm yeah. a slut, but I'm also an anesthesiologist. Dude. So I need you to count down from ten. Hey, who won the World Series when you were born? She goes, why are you asking me such questions? There's a giant cock inside of me. Oh, no. I mean, the first 15 minutes is just oral, and it's so aggressive that you're like, that, that I, I literally was swallowing nonstop at, for her, yeah. and, and, and yeah. I kept wiping my mouth going yeah. like, hey, so, hey. And look, at this little, look at this little hooch. The, and then, and then. It, it, but it's so aggressive. It's so aggressive that it's it's almost like you're watching like a bum fight video instead of a, a porn. Yeah. But he puts her through the and she said she wanted it, so he like put her to the test, and it made her famous as fuck. Really? It's the reason we know who she is. That like put her on the map. A hundred percent. Do you think they ever do like revisiting of it? I like think when they revisit albums she, where I, she's like, I remember it. I would love to talk to her about it. Just, I wish I could talk to her about it and her be real. Like, that's the problem. with Like, like a behind the music where she's like, I'll tell you about what really happened. They talk about, porn stars talk about porn the way Tell talks about open mics. 
He's like, yeah. nah, I did it. Yeah. I did it. And then it I was rough. It. Yeah, who gives a it. fuck? They're all rough for all of us. Yeah, dude. Like, I, they're so... As, are you girls against pulling up Rocco and... <laughs> I mean, Rocco Sofredis and Savannah Sampson. I just want to see if it's the video. I, it's a hotel room. Do you remember it in your brain? In my brain. It's like burnt onto your brain? It is forever burnt onto my brain. It's not even something sexual. Do you wonder it if really you die? Like, it's really like, imagine like... Do you wonder if you die like God is like, remember when this gave you a boner? Did you see... Look did at this. you see... Check did, this out. You're like, did you right. see Showtime? Not Showtime. Uh, Showgirls? Or no, it was the thing with the, about the Lakers on HBO. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you remember when magic johnson went to went to his first party right, and the yeah. old school guy was there and he's like what's up young blood yeah let's come out a little one-on-one yeah, yeah and you're like oh magic johnson's gonna smoke him and he humiliates him in front of the party sure that's that yeah that's rockers freddy's in savannah yeah he's like come on i'll, I'll show you is that it <laughs> you found it it's got to be on x hamster x hamster is that it I th- it looks like it uh-uh. oh so that- dude why would you jerk off don't skip the ad if you can fuck real women for free join the best hookup site dude if that you know what's funny is my brain at 13 thought that was real that there's just all these horny babes this looks a little too friendly but it looks like what i remember scroll forward scroll forward if you can keep going is there you see another girls or just the two of them that looks just a little that looks a little too us. gentle to be the thing i saw Damn, she got some nipple rings, though. Yeah. What a lovely pair of knockers. No, this is not. Why, thank you. Unless, the, the, as soon as the other girl comes in. No, this isn't it. This, this is, is just another this mauling. Is, man, he rocks like what? Tom loves him. Like really? He, oh, yeah, because Tom's like a, he's got like a broken brain. Yeah. So, like, that kind of like, you know, fucking, he loves that shit. <laughs> I am so not just that guy. the body movement you yeah. like, You know, that like, what's up? Yeah, dude, it's so funny. I, I like, Thinking about my level of horniness versus that, I'm just such like, an, yeah, all right. You know, do you and do you and your chick experiment sexually, like try new stuff? I mean, no. Like, I don't think we're like we're not like freaks. Yeah, Leanne turned into a freak. Oh, that's fun. She's downstairs. Yeah, she's my daughter's probably down there with her, going, "Mom, what the fuck? is Isla here?" She's like, "What the fuck?" <laughs> no. But Leanne, for for the first time in our in our relationship, is like exploded because Leanne and I started having more sex and started being more like attracted to each other. I think I also lost weight, and she looks the best she's ever looked. And we're just in this great place. And I go, I never thought we'd ever, and not experiment like fucking anything crazy. You guys are just, from the South. You're specifically from Florida. Yeah. So these are the years that you start getting super horny. Yeah. And you're comfortable in a banana hammock already. You're ready. For oh, that. I well, you know what turned me. You're over ready is- to be like. Oh, the pleasures of the body. <laughs> I got spray tanned and it fucked me up. You were certain, and Leanne got spray It got tanned. you really horny. Didn't we both it? got spray tanned and I was so turned And you guys on got, yeah, that, to, like, that hits your Florida pheromones and you're like, <laughs> oh, you're Florida peacocking. <laughs> you're like, oh, she got let's go spray have tanned. sweaty sex. <laughs> and I was like, I was like, I feel like I'm having sex with a Puerto Rican for the first time. And I oh get, my yeah, God. But a Puerto Rican with a really weird accent. Oh, dude. Or if you could just get her, you know, you can get her some uh, dialect lessons, bring in a dialect coach, teach her to start rolling her R's. You go, yeah, we're working on characters. That's where some money's going. Oh, That'd be so funny. You're on, you're on tour with Bert. They got that uh, dialect coach with him. <laughs> what the fuck's that about? Well, there is no difference technically. She's than like, when- oh, no, Bert. Look, I've been stuck in the hamper before. You're like, oh, oh, no. Oh, no. I'm a plumber that's lost his way. You guys are just off base. <laughs> cut, cut. There's no direction to this. What's the best accent to have sex to, with? Uh, I mean, probably like French is probably the sexiest. Yeah, right? no, but they sound like they're fucking, they got hit in the head by something. Oh. They're like, who, couldn't I have blueberry pancakes? Yeah, oh, you're just doing that girl from Pulp Fiction who did sound, <laughs> she sounded half deaf and who's, half French. Whose bike is this? You know, I, I scared people, but I still give my pancakes. And you're like, I still get the pancakes. Dude, if a girl talked like that when I was fucking her, if that was her sex voice, I'd be like, please stop that. <laughs> I have a pot belly. And you're like, I, I don't want to fuck you. And I have the pancakes, the blueberry pancakes. You go, I'm, I, I can't come when you talk like that. Oh, please give me all of your cum. It sounds like an Andy Kaufman voice. Oh, it was such a horrible accent in that movie. It turned Who's me off. Spike from- is, this, <laughs> is that? Who's that? Yeah, dude. Uh, I, that's. 
I went on a date with a French chick my freshman year, first week of freshman year summer. Nice. I met her in the dorms, and she was like, do you want to go to the uh, editor name out? Only because I know these girls Mr. know her. Mr. Crusher, have you ever sucked ass her? Uh, no. It was, I thought it was going to be such a romantic yeah. date. And she goes, uh, um, do you, can you get your friend's car? And I said, yeah. Oui. She goes, well, go to uh, go up north. And so I was like, oh, cool. So we got on Monroe and we drove out north and we went to a Publix and we just huffed uh, whipped cream canisters. You just did whippets? <laughs> so, just a French lady doing whippets? Just, they're so good. I have <gasps> never done this. When I was a little girl growing up in Paris, <laughs> I wanted to suck the whipped cream. <laughs> and then randomly my senior year, she moved in. My last senior year in the summer before I graduated, she moved in to the townhouse, a, like caddy quarter to mine in, in our townhouses in Indian Village. <sighs> That's fun. And one day I had a girlfriend you go, didn't we do whippets in a car up north? I said to her, I said, I haven't seen you since like freshman year. And she goes, yes, I know. Have Come you... to my room and lay in my bed with me. Oh, that's and, the most French sentence. And I had a girlfriend, but I was like, I'm not going to fucking roll it. I'm not going to miss out on this. So I went to her thing and we laid in her bed and smoked cigarettes Yeah, and talked. And I was like, and the whole time I'm like, but, but, but were we, were, Hemingway? we were, she was, head, no, she, was, start. she was head and I, I and my f- head to feet. Yeah. So we were like just laying in her. It was a single bed. Where do you think you go when you die, Bert? <laughs> and you're like, I don't know. I was just kind of hoping to touch your butt. Bert, I, do you think that existence is an accident? <laughs> you're like, are, are we going to fuck? <laughs> He's got like such freshman boy energy. I'm going to fuck you, right? We're going to 69 because we're I, set up to 69 now. I mean, I'm just waiting to roll into position. Yeah. <laughs> you just tell me when and I buck into position. I Belt, n- have you ever had 69? Yeah, there we go. <laughs> there we rock go. Rock and roll. You kick the flip flops off. <laughs> All right. Rock and roll time. Rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Lock and load. Let's do it. You want to roll up top? What do you want? <laughs> what do you want? Northern uh, Southern, <laughs> Southern Hemisphere. What are we doing? <laughs> <laughs> Remember, don't push forward, only push back. <laughs> Dude, I love that. Going in like a barrel roll. <laughs> yeah. All right, there we go. Take the flip flops off. Hat <laughs> turns around. Here we go. Time to go to work. Stub out the cigarette. Bat, have you ever had 69? All right, rock and roll time. <laughs> yeah. Yep. <Yeah. laughs> Uh, <laughs> I react too much to blowjobs to ever be good at 69. I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. It's like when a dog licks your foot. Yeah. Hey, 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 bud. Hey, bud. <laughs> what we got going on there, huh? Uh, 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 dude. <laughs> yeah, keep smoking weed, man. This has been a fucking fun ass hang. Yeah, this has been a fun ass hang. <laughs> I might only smoke weed for the next fucking couple months. Do it, dude. It's uh, it's just it's a definite, like it's nice to just yeah. And then here's the thing: like you'll eat, and then later you'll be like, "Hey, my night's not shot." Like yeah. day drinking shoots your night. Day just like your shoots. night's done. You're like, "All right, I'm either gonna go to bed early and be responsible, or I'm gonna stay up and hurt tomorrow." Yeah. But with weed, you can like come down. I've gotten to the point now with weed smoking where now I push it till all the way at the end. Like I'm not, I don't, I'm not doing sets tonight. If I'm yeah. doing stand up, yeah, what are you doing out here? I'm doing uh, Irvine Improv, San Diego. Coming back up, doing the store on Tuesday, next Tuesday. Then I'm going up to Seattle, Neptune Theater. I'm doing Calgary. I'm doing a festival, then Edmonton. Oh, so you're out on the road. Yeah, dude. I'm fucking back, baby. Oh, wow. Yeah. And so now my thing is, like, I only smoke weed after the shows, yeah. after the late show. Like, when I'm done doing stand-up for the night, that's when I get high now. That's, like, really? my little... Cause I love it. I'm like, yeah. I have way more energy. I'm like, I'm 40, dude. I fucking, you know, get. I used to get high when I was like 24 and be like, man, my mind's melting. And now I'm like, I forgot how this joke goes. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm like on the road being like, oh, this I don't is know. your tour. Yeah, Irvine, I'm on the road through San the end Diego. of the year. Um, doing well, that's some, nice. You're doing a Wednesday in Irvine. Yeah, just doing a Wednesday and, and then. 
Got Acme coming up in Minneapolis. Some good nights. I'm excited to do that one. Boulder Theater, three nights after I open for you at Red Rocks. For real? Yeah, I'm doing Red Rocks. So wait, 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 wait. What's your schedule? And hang on. Are you going to be in Colorado? I'm coming to Colorado Sweet. the third to hang out with you the night before the show. Yeah. Then the night of the show, hang out with you. The fifth, I think I'm going to go see my mom. Hang on. Hang on one second. Hang on. Yeah, I'm a... Uh doing a lot of stand-up and it's very fun you're i'm so glad you're just doing stand-up it's right very now. very fun i'm gonna start a podcast in november i think what are you October. gonna call it i think i'm just gonna call it soda it's a good call yeah i think it's just gonna be like this just to hang but i think i'm gonna give people like a small i don't you know so okay so we do red we'll rocks do on the fourth wednesday yeah wednesday october 4th on the fifth you're gonna see your mom fifth and sixth i'm gonna see my mom and then the seventh i'm doing boulder but um, i'm gonna come out the third and hang out Coming yeah, out yeah, the yeah. Night we're before. out the third. We're out the yeah. third. To I'm gonna go out. hang out with Katie and I are gonna come out to that. Oh, nice. And hang. So we're doing so here's how our week goes, just in case you want to be a part of any of this. You're probably not, but so we're doing Red Rocks the fourth. Yeah. Veil the fifth. Damn. And then we're going back to Red Rocks to watch Goose on the sixth. Ooh. If you want to come. Uh the Veil might be. I might. I might come and hang out with Veil because I want to show Katie Veil. Oh, then just she's come with us. Been, so we got. We're getting yeah, a sprinter. She, she's it's, never been to the right now because I. I think Jay has a show. Okay. I think Jay has a show, and so I should. I should. Someone told I should me they were bully like, him into staying for the fifth. Yeah. Well, so we're we're doing Veil. So we're. we're ta- I think it's just a, a theater in Veil. So we're taking a sprinter from Morrison to Veil. Hell yeah! And then doing the show. I think we might spend the night there and then take it back. To, to Red Rocks to go do... Oh, to go to Goose? Go to Goose. Uh, have you ever been to Vail? Yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. I've been... My favorite, like, it, Vail, and then I would, if I had money, if I got, like, fuck you money, I'd definitely buy a house in, like, Breckenridge. Uh, can I tell you, man, Breckenridge is at 7,000 feet? Or no, no, four, what's the altitude of Breckenridge? Oh, it's higher, it's, it's there. higher than seven. Yeah. It's higher than seven. It's like... I have I these think, Colorado lungs. It would kick back in. I do not. And I, I have... And is drinking a problem there for you? Yeah. See, so here's the thing. 9, that 000. was my that was my fucking Conan's wheel. When I was growing up, drinking in Colorado. That was that's such a great this I hope <laughs> I want everyone to go Google. I don't no one gets that. I <laughs> totally get that. I would just push that wheel, dude. And then you just come in the next thing you know, I'm just a drinker and they're like Dan, what is best in life? Like to crush your enemies, see them <laughs> driven before you, to hear the lamentations of their women. Yeah, Conan's wheel, dude. If you, oh, that's like I didn't know it was a, it was a strongman thing. I was talking about the from the movie. Yeah, no, the movie Conan the Barbarian. Uh, but I would, dude, when I moved to Arizona, it was sea level. Oh yeah, I went down there and I was like, you know, the scene in the superhero movie where they're like, what the. F- fuck is going on i was like dude i was taking down fucking booze i was i, I drank a uh, uh i think it was a fifth of spiced rum by myself and i was like Whew. that i like i was like that was a lot yeah and it should have like up in colorado that would have made me throw up yeah but i was like what is going on down oh here? man because of yeah dude they chained him to the wheel as a child yeah and he's like the big group. I love. I used to great... watch this movie once a year. It's a great. This time and Young lapse. Frankenstein are the, my two movies. Uh, that I, hold on, that I watch. Like, hold on. My I was just favorite... talking to Bobby Lee about this. What? I fucking love Young Frankenstein, dude. I just said to Pete, my assistant, as we were in the car, yeah, and putting on the Ritz came on, so and funny. I said, "Do you remember this from?" <laughs> Where you go, I'll go after this. <laughs> yeah, dude, it's. Fucking unbelievable. Gene it's, Wilder, that is one of the funniest performances anyone has ever put on. From yeah. him melting down in the classroom, like from the start, and then the whole thing, dude, when the horses. Oh, hold on. I got to listen to it. Do you have a headset? Yeah. I might have to watch this yeah, tonight. Dude, I, it is. I don't think my daughters have ever seen it. Have they seen all the, have you shown them all the Mel Brooks movies? No. They yeah. watched, they watched uh, Blazing Saddles. Blazing Saddles kids. is great, but like History of the World Part One. Well, there they go. Let's go. I mean, I fucking. All of I I was like space balls. It all they, came out seen space balls. It all came out perfectly for me. Like it lined up where I could watch old Mel Brooks, and then as I was growing up, more Mel Brooks came. Oh out. And I was man, like, this is awesome! I was saying this, Leanne. There was a period where, when I was dating Leanne, she realized I hadn't seen any of the movies that most people had seen. Yeah, and that's fun putting someone through a movie. You know, it's yeah. a fun one uh, that I like. What uh, the other guys? The other guys might be like one but, of. 
With Mark Wahlberg? Yeah, and Will Ferrell. Really? That might be Adam McKay and Will Ferrell's best movie. Really? Because it's, again, it's one of those movies you watch, you laugh at, you watch again, you laugh more. You watch like the third and fourth time and you're like, this movie's so goddamn funny. Yeah. There's just all this stuff. That might be a biased opinion. I might be wrong, but like, check it out. Watch it more than once. What's the thing they have him do? Uh, a gun check? Office or- pop. Office pop. You haven't done your office pop yet. Damon Wayans Jr.'s great in that. Rob Riggle's great in that. There's so many. Michael Keaton fucking steals the show. He is so goddamn funny in that. It is. Michael Keaton alone is worth it, watching that movie. Really? Yeah, he's so fucking funny in that movie. That's fucking. Like, you see it, and you're like, oh, yeah, he used to be a comic. He's fucking great at it. Do you it. know what the best, one of my favorite scenes ever is, and it's, it makes its rounds on TikTok, the scene from Ted where they're in the improv class? Yeah. And he's like, "All right, give me a, give me a, uh, give me a place." And they're like, "The offices of Charlie Hedba." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I, dude, I only watched Ted once in theaters. Very high. Wait, have you ever seen that clip? And I don't remember up, that. Hang scene. on, can you pull up? Hang on. This is this made me laugh. I'm never gonna because I was fucking headset. These are good headsets, dude. These are solid cans. Uh, okay, okay, oh shit! You ready? You ready? Tim Dillon's like, "Where are you? Are you doing a podcast with him today?" No, I'm supposed to get food with him. Oh, that fucking rules! That's an orgy I'd like to be at. Yeah, where are you guys going? I don't know. Starbucks. You know what's crazy about Family Guy? I always think about this. That's kind of the younger generation's Mel Brooks, because it's the same like joke speed. Yeah, where it's just like fucking. <laughs> yeah. So you see people like young kids now would probably be like, oh, Seth MacFarlane was like how we, yeah, you know, growing yeah. up with like Mel Brooks. We're like, he always makes some shit that's super funny. He's so good. Because I remember American Dad. I was like, ah, how are you going to do Family Guy? What is this like? Yeah. Not, and then I became a bigger fan of American Dad. Jay yeah. was always the one that was great at indoctrinating me in those stuff. He's good at. He's- Jay would be like, check this episode out, and it is like it was like your friend back in the day that knew albums. Yeah, Jay Jay'd be like, like play was... it from episode three of season three through, and you're like, that's fucking rolls, dude. When we got when we got uh, done the tour, yeah, Jay Jay had been on my bus the very last uh, day, and Jay had set up the TV for Jay. Love, and, that's the most fun, and uh, and that's the most fun you're ever gonna have. And, is Jay curating clips and hanging out with him when I go to his house? It's my favorite thing in the world to do. Yeah. We got, get a sandwich and be like, show me what you got, dude. He'll show me public access. He's so good at it. So fun. I just said Jay would come in here, put on the Norma Tech boots, smoke a joint, and just watch this for hours. Yeah. And Isla was obsessed with Jay. Yeah. Was obsessed with Jay because they dressed alike. Yeah. And they like the same music. Yeah. And what's funny is like for her, that music is like like someone in our a like when I was growing up, it'd be like someone being into music from like the mid 70s. Yeah. Like, not a knock on it, but I'm saying, like, the kids I knew that, like, liked Rolling Stones early, like, Exile on Main Street. And you're like, I'm listening to fucking Hammer. Like, yeah. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck you're talking about. And they're like, no, it, that was, like, fun for, for you know, so that's got to be awesome. Well, we get, we, so we switch buses the last night. Everyone gets on a bus to race to the airport. And then we take my bus to go drive home yeah and on the ride home we we end up in bend oregon yeah and the first night and we pull the bus in we slide out the to, to the side and everyone's waking up and i and everyone's making coffee everyone's trying to wait start their morning and isla turns on the thing and goes uh this is total big j right here dad and it's all jay's shit and isla starts watching and the whole family yeah. watches a big j best of playlist starts with epic fail army 2 dude i'll tell you the the where you really want to be the exclusive premium vip content is to sit with jay and his dvr because he's got stuff dvr that he's like you seen this cops oh. and he brings it up and you're like i've never seen this and he's like oh. it's crazy he can break it down he goes have you, you, you remember you remember gruden the- used to do that on espn yeah. with quarterbacks yeah that's what jay should do with comics he just should. come in and break down footage and be like what is that what's going on there he I had I went into uh, New York once. Is what I was not younger, but I I was out of Travel Channel, just doing stand up, and I was starting to sell tickets. And I could go in and do radio. And I came in and I was still like hungry. Yeah. And so I came in and did radio, and I started drinking early. And then I went and did an event. I had too much coffee, and I drank again. And then by the time I got to the bonfire, I told Jay, I'm like, something's off, man. Like I'm, I feel like I've had way too much coffee. And he just goes, Why don't you come to my house? 
we'll watch cops and eat barbecue. I remember that. I remember yeah. he said that after the show. Yeah, and I said okay, and we and I was because we asked you. I remember where we were because we that was when we used to go out the other side. Yeah, down because they lived in the East Village, and he was like, I remember we were outside and I was going to do spots, and you were like. He was like, "What are you gonna do, Bert? You gonna like go hang out?" And you're like, "Honestly, I don't, I don't know." And, he, and, you, and you said that you're like, "I, yeah, I'm just, just kind of feeling off." And he's like, "Yeah, we can go to my house." For, and I remember that. Yeah, we got barbecue. It's the best. And going going to Jay's weed. house. I had and like, like a cold beer. Yeah, and just like one cold beer, smoked a joint, and then he casually, like he goes in, he changes in back with basketball shorts, and, and he then shows, he just goes through and watches. He can show you bad comedy. Oh, he he can show first, you good episodes said, of Cops. First, he edit his name out. The first thing he says. Have you watched the Nick Cannon special? Uh, you know, that's what started. By the way, you don't have to edit that out. We, we've been on record <laughs> okay. trashing Nick Cannon for years. You know what the funniest thing I've ever seen Big J do? And I've did eight years of radio with him, and he made me laugh harder than I've ever laughed in my life. Up there with the fucking the laugh I was telling you about uh, when I was a kid. Nothing yeah. ever they can re create that. I broke your microphone. It's okay. <laughs> Dude, one of the hardest I've ever laughed is, so we watched Nick Cannon special. I'm opening for Jay in pennsylvania uh through our buddy richie redding he was hosting the show and he had us on he had jay on and i was featuring crazy hungover jay and i drive to pennsylvania do the show and then jay was doing a show for a guy named sugar bear i believe and we went to a room it was an all-black comedy show jay was the white guy and jay was having a set and you know he's being hilarious and he asked a woman about her pubic hair and it created a kerfuffle because the lady, it was the daughter of the guy that was like promoting the show, but he was like, th thought it was hilarious, but the stepmom didn't. Yeah. And Jay was being funny the whole time. And then, dude, it, it just, it created this like weird spinoff where Jay was like, all right, fuck this. I'm getting out of here. And it was, dude, we went outside and for a running joke, this like woman came outside and she was like, I know Clementy. I go to the Tropicana. We made fun of her for years, <laughs> but then it started raining crazy heavy. We we're supposed to drive back to New York. And Jay was like, do you want to go to my mom's? We were making fun of Nick. He was showing me Nick Cannon clips on YouTube. And he's like, can you see this guy doing stand-up? And I was like, that's wild. And he's like, dude, he has a Showtime special. My mom has Showtime. It's raining. Do you want to go get cheesesteaks, go to my mom's house, or go get Wawa, go to my mom's house and watch Nick Cannon? I was like, more than anything. <laughs> we go to his house. We end up getting high with his brother, which Jay at the time was like, I don't know if I should have got my brother high. Turns out he was using opiates. It wasn't the worst Jay was doing. Jay even said that on the bonfire. Yeah. He was like, it was crazy. Dude, that night I sat there and we watched Nick Cannon special and it was the hardest I've ever laughed at a special. So it bonds us. And where I was talking about it's, Nick Cannon, we, he fast I, forward to Pete Davidson is opening for Nick Cannon. Yeah. It's back in the day when Pete was opening for Nick Cannon and he goes, yeah, we're about to be a governor's in Long Island. Do you guys want tickets? And Jay and I are like, Yeah can you get us tickets to see Nick Cannon? So I take the train out. This is when Jay was living on Long Island. I take the train out to Long Island. Jay picks me up. We go to his house, get high as shit. We go to uh, Governor's. We sit in the very, very back. So Tuesday or Wednesday, Nick Cannon comes out, does stand up. There's a moment where Nick Cannon is like giving a speech and he goes, Y'all, we could end racism here tonight. We could end racism here tonight. And Jay stands up and goes. <laughs> and the whole crowd starts clapping. Jay got a slow clap going where Nick Cannon wasn't intending to get a slow clap. Dude, I fucking fell oh. on the floor. Oh. Jay just stood up and perfectly hit a slow clap oh. that it spread. It was like watching someone skip it like seven times where you're like, it's going all the way. It was like, <laughs> dude. So fucking funny. Nick Cannon would do a joke and Jay would be like, mm -hmm. dude, it was <clears throat> one of one of my favorite nights of comedy. He's he's the best. His I you know, when I what sold me on fully loaded, like when, when you know, we I thought it'd be a fun idea. Yeah. And then I was like, Oh, let's do we'll do two weekends and if you know it'll be fun. In worst case scenario, we'll make great content out of it. It's it'll be worth it on social media. So we sell all the tickets. And then I go, okay. But it, Leanne and I set it up that we weren't making money. We just wanted to make sure it was fun. Yeah. And so we made sure we invested a lot back into the festival. This is the first tour. Our very first night, we do our show. We get done, and we go into the party bus. We had a party bus then that was just for partying. Yeah. And we go in. I want to say Georgia was in there. And Jay has the whole place in stitches. Yeah. I mean... 
And He's we, one of the funniest human beings you'll ever meet. And we life. are crying. George is crying, laughing. Yeah. Crying. Big J has a special place in both my girls' hearts. They lo- adore him. Yeah, he's... And- He's I'm a guy. Tell, just I'm going to tell you a funny Big J story in a when second. When you walk in the room and you see him, you're like, hell yeah. <laughs> He's and just so, always like, you're like, fuck yeah, dude. So we're, we're all, we're driving down the street and then we're finally like, we're all laughing to the point where we can't laugh anymore. Yeah. And I, and it's like four in the morning and I go, all right, let's pull the buses over. We'll all get on our bus. And so we pull on the side of a fucking highway. We all pull off like at like a rest area or whatever. I don't even remember. All I know is we get out and we go to get in our, our new bus and Jay, we're still laughing, and Jay grabs me laughing, and he goes, one more thing. So are we just supposed to believe there's dinosaurs in Jurassic Park? Out of nowhere, and I yeah. start crying laughing. Uh, I go, yeah. Jay, stop. And yeah. then he just goes, I mean, I mean, we just going to assign the fact that we believe in dinosaurs? Like, he's yeah. obsessed with it. Dude, this is a fucking great yeah. podcast. That was a Thank lot of fun, you. dude. Thank you. Yeah, for yeah. thanks for having me, me, dude. Thanks for having me on Fully Loaded. That was a fucking blast. Dude, I got to tell you, I'm, and I've said it to you, I'll say it again. And I'm not, you know, I think there's sure there are people that bum that you're not doing the bonfire anymore. Yeah. I'm so glad you're focusing on stand up. Oh, thanks. Because your stand up is, and the only word I can use is undeniable. Oh, thanks. You man. murdered anywhere. You had no issue, like, because we had, you know, whatever. But I would put you anywhere in the lineup and you murdered everywhere you were. Oh, thanks. And you were so, like, just a hundred proof on stage. It thanks, was man. fucking amazing. It was a lot of fun. That was like performing at some of the biggest venues I've ever performed at. It was cool. And that was just fun to be on the bus with you and Jay. Oh, it was, so it was like fun. you know, it was. Uh, I miss Jay. You know, I know I chose to leave the bonfire, but I miss him, and it's like yeah. fun to hang out with him because, like we were just saying, he's the best. He's, he's the, the best to hang best. out. And dude, you were so generous and so fun, and it was so fucking awesome. Oh, thanks, man. And it was so cool to see, like, just it's impressive to see the shows at that scale. Be like, oh. fuck it. Well, hey. next year we're doing it again, so I'll reach out and we're doing. Dude, yeah, we're doing was, two nights at the Gorge. And I think th- this fall, I think I'll be doing some dates with you. Yeah, well, you're the best, dude. Thanks for having me. Bye.